Um, so we're going to um, uh, do the public meeting at this time because we have uh, uh, visitors on our Zoom uh, for, for that. So the public meeting under the Planning Act, uh, due to the efforts uh, to contain the spread of COVID-19 and protect all individuals and to comply with the province's state of emergency order, the council chambers will not be open to a public to attend the council meetings until further notice. As noted on tonight's agenda, if members of the public had any comments, they could provide them by email to the clerk by 4.30 p.m. today. This will be addressed later in the agenda as provided in the public notices for the site alteration application and for the rezoning application, which was the subject of the public meeting under the Planning Act these individuals that were those individuals that were circulated the notice could request an invitation to this evening's zoom council meeting there were requests and these individuals were provided an invitation and may be noted on your screen of the attendees and i think i see a few of them we would ask that if you are not speaking to please keep your microphone muted and only unmute when you wish to speak if you wish to speak please raise your hand to the screen and i'll acknowledge that Additionally, this meeting is being audio and video recorded and will be posted on the township's website within 48 hours. One last note that I would like to say at this time is that uh, Councillor Cody uh, sent his regrets. He had a personal matter um, uh, to deal with, so he will not be uh, in attendance at tonight's meeting. So then... Um, uh, we have this uh, public meeting, so I'm going to hand the floor then over to uh, Director of Planning at this time. Is that correct? I think maybe to me. Okay. Uh, to the Councilor chair, chair of the public meeting. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Councillor Ganan. Go ahead. Okay. So good evening and welcome to the Zoom Township of West Lincoln public meeting. The date is June 29th, 2020. This is a public meeting to consider a zoning bylaw amendment application submitted by... Leonard and Lynn Snippa. The Planning Act requires in Section 34, Subsection 12, that before passing a zoning bylaw amendment, Council must hold at least one public meeting for the purpose of informing the public in respect of the amendment. The purpose of this public meeting is to receive comments and answer questions from the public regarding the amendment to the Township of West Lincoln Zoning Bylaw. We stress that at this point, no decision has been made on the proposed amendment and any comments received will be taken into account by council in their consideration. The Planning Act requires through section 34, subsection 13, that council advise the public that if a person or public body does not make oral submissions at a public meeting or make written submissions to the Township of West Lincoln before the bylaw is passed, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of council for the Township of West Lincoln to the local planning appeal tribunal or LPAT. Would the clerk please advise of the method and dates by which the notice of the public meeting was given? Thank you, Councillor Ganan. Proper notice was given by way of a mail public notice sent out on June 6, 2020. Additionally, a yellow sign was posted on the subject property and on the township's website. Thank you. Will the planner one, Alexa Cooper, please explain the purpose and reason for the proposed zoning bylaw amendment? Alexa. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, oh, Roberto, would you just let me share my screen so I, so I can show the, the property? I'm not too sure if she's still there. Okay, I, I'll just read it anyways. Uh, so a rezoning application was submitted by Len and Lynn Snippa uh, to clear a condition of consent for their consent application, uh, B01 2020 WL. Uh, the rezoning application is proposing to rezone the, the small residential lot, which is to be severed from agricultural to a rural residential zone with no site specifics, and to rezone the remaining agricultural land to an agricultural purposes only zone or APO uh, with a site specific to recognize a deficient uh, lot area of 21.6 hectares where 39 hectares is what's required. Uh, the Public Works Niagara Region and the NPCA have no objections and we didn't receive any comments from the public in regards to this application. Uh, it's pretty simple so at this point staff will provide a rec report at a future uh, 
planning building environmental committee meeting or council meeting following the input received from tonight's meeting. Thank you. You're on mute now. Council Ganan, you were uh, muted. You're on mute. Council Ganan, you're still muted. muted. You should find it in your I, I, I brought it. It's it, I was on and then it was off. So Alexa, now that your screen has been shared, do you want mm -hmm. to talk briefly about that again or yeah, so the the small residential holding, which is to be severed off, is this one acre here. This is the piece that's to be rezoned to a rural residential zone. This metal clod building has actually been removed. It's no longer sitting there um, because it didn't meet the zoning regulations. Uh, and then the remainder of the land, which you can kind of see in a more zoomed out version over here. Uh, this is the part that's the remaining agricultural land that the farmers are to keep. And that's what's being rezoned to the APO zone with the site specific exception to recognize the deficient uh, lot area. Okay, thank you, Ms. Cooper. So um, I don't see the SNPs on the call. I started to say that. Is there an agent on this call to speak on behalf of this? <laughs> Okay, seeing none. Are there any written submissions and or oral from anyone present in the Zoom meeting regarding the proposed zoning bylaw amendment? I would like to stress that this may be the only public meeting held with respect to this application. Therefore, if any members of the public that are in attendance at this Zoom meeting would like to make comments and or provide written comments, they should do them now by unmuting your microphone as LPAT may not consider any comments, <coughs> pardon me, made during any other council and or committee meeting. Also, anyone to speak is required to unmute your microphone to talk, and once they are finished, they should mute again the microphone. Prior to speaking, please provide your name and address for the record. So I see there are some uh, new people on the call or any people on the call wishing to speak to this application. Okay. Seeing none, do any members of committee have any oral or written submissions on the proposed zoning bylaw amendment? Please note that members of the committee must make their comments now as LPAP may not consider comments made at any other council or committee meeting. Any members of council wishing to speak are required to unmute their microphone to talk and once they're finished, they should again mute the microphone. So members of council, any comments on this? Okay, again, seeing none. Please be advised that a technical report is being considered by committee this evening and that a recommendation report will be forthcoming to a future committee and or council meeting. Please be advised that once committee and or council has made a decision with respect to the zoning bylaw amendment and if approved by council, a notice of its passing will be circulated with an appeal period. If you wish to be notified of a council's decision, please ensure you, that you email the township clerk, Joanne Shime at jshime at westlincoln.ca. Anyone who is interested in observing council and or committee discussions about a particular bylaw should not solely rely on mailed notices and thus miss the opportunity to attend applicable meetings. It is suggested that you watch the township's website for posting of agendas to review items that will be discussed at council. <coughs> the agenda meetings are posted on the township website at 4 p.m. on the Friday prior to the meeting. Additionally, meeting schedules are also noted on the township's website for the public to view. If you wish to receive notices by email, it is suggested that you contact the township clerk to advise of your request and include your email address along with your mailing address and your phone number. Okay, so I'm going to say that this public meeting with respect to the proposed zoning bylaw amendment is concluded at the hour of 718. Thank you, Councilor Ganan, for conducting that public meeting. And uh, so then that brings us back to our uh, main uh, agenda for this evening. Item number three is the singing of O Canada. Uh, I, I'll sing a solo again. Um, I think it's the neatest way to do this. Um, you, you're you're free to stand or or uh, remain seated. Um, I I will stand and um, we'll just uh, sing a, o, o Canada. O Canada. Our home and native land, true patriot love in all thy sons of man. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, a true north strong and free. 
From far and wide, O oh Canada, we stand on guard for God keep our land glorious and free. O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. And then we have uh, our opening uh, petition. Councillor Ganan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We meet to serve our community, to use our resources wisely and well, to represent all members of our community fairly, to make decisions that promote the common good. We recognize our responsibility to the past and to the future, and the rights and needs of both individuals and communities. As trusted servants, may we act wisely and well. Thank you, Councillor Ganan. Um, so we're going to uh, conclude our confidential uh, open session directives. Uh, Councillor Jonker, you have the resolution um, uh, number one. Uh, do you have that in front of you? Are you able to read that? You're on mute, please. Unmute. There we yeah, go. Yeah, I can't find those on the East Drive. Oh. Okay, I'll tell you what, I'll read it out for the sake of the meeting. I'll read it out, and if you can move it once I'm concluded. Uh, the report PD-81-20 regarding confidential recommendation report future steps to secure property on John Street, Caserville, dated June 29, 2020, be received, and two, that staff be authorized to proceed as directed in closed session. Three, that staff report back on an update on this project and next steps as required. Uh, Councillor, do you... Um, uh, I move that. Move that. Can I get a seconder? Councillor Trombetta, thank you. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, any opposed? And that's carried, Madam Clerk. <coughs> um, Excuse me. Councillor Rayner, um, can you, uh, do you have the uh, report for the next one? Um, not in front of me. Okay, I will read that one as well. If, when I conclude, you can uh, move it. We um, can proceed. I don't know why I've got a printout of it, but it's not. It's not on here. Okay, it starts with uh, that report PD dash seventy seven. Sorry, Mayor, you don't have to read it. Okay. Yep. So this um, that report PD dash seventy seven. No, I don't have it. Regarding confidential recommendation report natural seventh severance, Easter Center, dated June 29, 2020, be received and two, that staff be authorized to proceed as Yeah, okay, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Yep. Um, moved by myself, the report PD 077-20. Is that the one you want? With yeah, regard? that's the one. I just read it. If you Yeah, but I, I withdrew my I withdrew myself as the mover. Yeah, but this is in the open session. This is a different motion. This is the open session directive. So you still want me to read that same thing then, even though I removed it? Well, you don't need to read it again. I did read it. Would you like to move it? Um, uh, yeah, I'll move it this time. Okay, can I get a seconder, please? Councillor Riley, thank you very much. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, All any opposed? And that's carried. Thank you very much. And then we have a third motion. Um, um, I think it's Councillor Riley. I think you have the, the writing for this one. If uh, Mayor and Clerk be Councillor Riley, yeah. So, Mr. Mayor, I don't have it in front of me. I'm just, I can't actually get into my eScribe account for some reason. Okay. All right, I will read it. We all got problems today. Yeah, I will read it. It's um, that mayor and clerk be and are hereby authorized to sign the transfer payment agreement with respect to investing in Canada infrastructure program, rural and northern stream project. Councillor uh, Riley, would you move that? I would. Okay, can I get a seconder? Councillor Ganan, thank you very much. Um, are any comments or questions? Seeing none, um, any opposed? Then that's carried, Madam Clerk. Um, at this time, um, I'm going to ask: Are there any changes in orders of items on the agenda? 
seeing none, Madam Clerk. Are there any uh, disclosures of pecuniary and or conflict of interest? There were no disclosures uh, noted in this evening's agenda. Do, does any member have one? Councillor Ganan. Yes, I would like to point out that on this agenda under 17.1 consent agenda item number four, report PD-72-20, file number 1601-020-19 High River Developments is my previously disclosed conflict. Although it's a withdrawal, I thought that I still should be declaring that conflict. So noted, Madam Clerk. Any, any others? Okay. This is um, uh, item six is a request to address items on the agenda. So we have some guests. Uh, uh, were there any members of the public that had emailed comments prior to 4.30 today with respect to a specific item on the agenda as permitted to six, seven of the procedural bylaw? Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mayor Balsma. Yes, I have one to read into the record. It's from uh, David and Monica Saloma. Salome. Um, I'm sure this is too late, but I have a few questions. On picture on picture on back, it seems Berm is not in the application. Sorry, this is in regards to site alteration file 3000-004-20. And I believe that is the Peter Budd. Um, application on South Grimsby Road 5. So I'll start over. I'm sure this is too late, but I have a few questions. On picture on back, it seems Berm is not in this application, but they are building it now. It's up to track height. How high do they plan make it because it is, it gets higher, the sound of the train will be deflected, deflected back at Northbridge and its survey. If so, a berm or wall needs to be put on the other side of track. We now we know we now have a pothole at their entrance on South on Grimsby Five, which needs to be fixed, and a line needed to be painted down the middle of Grimsby Five. Have been almost forced into ditch by trucks going into site. Maybe line will keep them on their side of the road. We are also getting dust from the site. My car gets a good amount of it at times. Anything that can be done will help. David Solomon. Okay, thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, now at this time, uh, we have uh, some uh, guests on our Zoom meeting. I'm going to, uh, this is dealing with the, um, the Bozic uh, site. Alteration 08006 Concession Road 7. Um, this is uh, Mr. Phil Skil Skilstra or Shilstra. Um, would you like to enter your comments into our meeting at this time? Just unmute yourself. Go ahead, sir. Um, yeah, I don't uh, have a whole lot to say. Um, I, I did take in some dirt into this uh, house location as. Uh, as you probably read, um, with no intent to break a bylaw or anything, just just to make just to grade out the property better. And um, I was unaware of the bylaw, so um, yeah, that, that's really all I have to say. And 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 definitely not for taking on dirt, you know, for any sort of income-producing mean. There's no there's no transfer of money for dirt. I was strictly doing it to um, just to grade the property without knowing the bylaw. Okay, thank you, sir, for the, for your comments. We'll uh, take that into consideration. Um, at this time, we have um, uh, some um, people wanting to speak uh, to the, the Peter Budd um, site alteration 2881 South Grimsby Road 5. I have a, a so Trichu. Is he present? Uh, uh, present. Go ahead, sir. Uh, yeah, I wasn't, um, I didn't know if I needed to speak or not. I was just uh, attending the meeting to answer questions, actually, if there was any. Oh, okay, you're the agent for Peter Budd. Yeah, correct. I'm with Rankin Construction. Okay, then we'll just put you on hold. You can stay on the meeting. Um, I have um, Peter Budd on, uh, is, he, is he also on? I'm I'm in Stowe's office right now at Rankin, and we're oh, on here. Okay, okay. all right. We'll keep you on. Then we'll go to uh, Leslie Haida. Leslie Haida. Uh, 
like to unmute? Yes, I Go think ahead. I got it. Hi, um, I'm currently a resident, um, I guess directly north of the site in question. Uh, I have a couple issues. One has been the excessive noise that has been happening. Uh, I do have noise canceling headphones on right now. Um, yeah, I've had to wear these pretty much all day since I have been working from home during the whole COVID pandemic. I'm still working from home. Since I submitted the, app, the letter regarding um, my concerns, um, the vibration has stopped. Um, but I do see a, an excessive amount of dirt that has been built up there. The original application was for, I think, uh, no, maybe a little upwards of 300 loads of dirt to be dumped on site. I, uh, through my neighbor's estimation, there's probably closer to about a thousand loads that have been dumped there. There is a berm that has started to be built. I have a mountain of dirt and dust flying in my backyard. I have to hose everything down. Like this is this is ridiculous. I don't mind if they're storing things for future use, but they need to do something. They've destroyed the road. I've had numerous people commenting about the trucks pulling into oncoming traffic, the traffic flying down the road. It's it's brutal. I don't think that road is constructed to withstand that kind of weight and that kind of traffic. Um, Ms. Haida. Um are there any comments or questions from um, from uh, members of uh, council um, to Ms. Ida? Um, I'm going to come back to um, Mr. Stowe Trichu. Uh, would, do you care to um, uh, make some comments at this point? Um, enter on the on the record. Uh, I think um, Ms. Haida's complaint, if I'm not mistaken, was the letter that I had received and responded to, which I think is part of this report. Okay. 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 Um, at this point, then, um, I'm going to, uh, is there anyone else wishing to speak on, on this particular matter? Is anyone prepared to speak on this? Okay. Then I'm going to go to um, uh, Tassone. Uh, or Joe, uh, Joe Tomeo, Tomeno, or, or Bruno and Lily Tasson. Uh, who's speaking on uh, on this file? Uh, I can speak to. Uh, this is regarding site alteration technical report regarding Young Street. Yes, please. Uh, Go ahead. So there's no recommendation tonight. Uh, we've read the report, and uh, there's not much there. We agree with what, what's in it. So we're waiting for the recommendation report. Mainly, we just showed up tonight if there's any questions from council. Okay, thank you very much. Um, are there um, any other members of the public on this Zoom meeting wishing to enter any comments uh, with respect to an item on our agenda this evening? Um, Jared, in, in a second, you will be one of the um, uh, one of the appointments. So you, you're, we won't forget about you, sir. <laughs> okay. Mr. Mayor. Yes, go ahead. Can I suggest that we open it up to members of council if they have any questions while the applicants or their agents are on the call? Oh, okay. Yeah. Are, are there any members of council wishing to? Um, <laughs> Uh, speak to any of the issue, uh, agents that are present on any of the items that are on our agenda. Councillor Ganan, go ahead. I, 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 um, I have a couple of things. First of all, I wanted to ask, um, under the site alteration on Young Street, um, apparently this enormous amount of soil is to improve agricultural use of the land. So I guess either to the Chessons or to Mr. Tomeno, um, do we do you have a name for this farmer and has this farmer had any input the person that you're renting the land to as to why these uh, requirements of this amount of soil need to be made at this point it's, it's a huge huge amount of soil so i'm just wondering what the background is for this so maybe uh, mr tomeno do you know 
I can answer part of the question, then I'll let Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Tassoni answer this, uh, some of it also. But it seems like a large uh, amount of fill, but the uh, the property is also a, a fair size, and the and the low area in the middle um, is pretty low. So once the uh, site alteration, as per the plan submitted, uh, you, you won't see uh, visually, you won't see a, a huge difference. Uh, from the road regarding the, uh, the amount of fill being brought in. The other thing to remember here, this is also the, the residents and the, uh, uh, for Mr. and Mrs. Tassoni. So they, they actually just built a new house on the property. So they actually, it's, it's their principal residence also here. Um, so the area is very low. The site alteration plan that we have submitted that doesn't change the grades at the uh, at the property line, and, and we do not uh, intend to impact the um, uh, flow to neighboring properties. And and regarding the agriculture, uh, the the low area can't really be farmed anyways because it's uh, uh, it's very low. But uh, uh, I'll let Mr. Tassoni speak or Mrs. Tassoni speak to the uh, regarding the farmer. Thank you. Mr. Mr. There we go. Yeah, we can hear you now. Hi, this is Bruce. Yeah, the field in the middle is pretty much washed out when the rain comes and it stays low and it's swamped all year long until it really dries middle of summer. So there's quite a bit of field that is washed away. So is the hope, Mr. Chisoni, that that will be useful land in the future? It is useful, but it's right now it's not useful because it gets crops just dying on them. He plants the crops there and it still dies on them all year long because it just doesn't drain properly. It sits floats in the middle. So my question is, is the farmer hoping to make that more useful land when yes. it stays up? Yes. Okay. And is this a local farmer that's farming your property? Yes, it is. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other uh, councillors wishing to ask a question of anybody that's on the screen at this time? Seeing none, then um, I thank you, uh, all, the, all our guests. Um, you're free to stay on, uh, but that was your opportunity to speak. I thank you for your comments that have been entered, and they will be considered at the appropriate time. Thank you. Uh, at this time, we have an appointment presentation. Uh, we welcome uh, Mr. Marcus uh, from IBI Group, and this is regarding the crossings on the 20 condo extension. Uh, Mr. Marcus, you, your opportunity to speak is now. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'd like to take just a moment to speak to the extension to the draft plan of standard condominium approval for the crossings on the 20 development. Uh, that's item PD-068-20 uh, on your agenda. Uh, as you've likely seen from the staff report, there's a fair bit of history to this project. Uh, the original approval dates back to uh, 2009, and I understand uh, there has been uh, historically some concern from this uh, from these count this council and the previous council regarding developments that uh, appear to sit in indefinite hold after they achieve a, a, a draft condition, uh, conditional approval. And I just wanted to provide a couple comments, uh, indicate that we are moving the project forward. Uh, so as you've likely seen uh, out on uh, Town Line Road, that's the south side of our development that's under construction, the servicing's completed, and about 50% of the dwelling units are under construction or completed to date. And we're hopeful with sales uh, pending position to uh, finalize construction uh, this fall. And we're hopeful for a sprint late, uh, late 2020, early 2021 registration of that second condominium. Uh, unfortunately, the north uh, portion of the north condominium has seen zero activity to date other than uh, you'll recall the sewer line being installed and the road reconstruction that had to be completed for this project. That was our initial delay in the development. Uh, since that time, we've been 
came uh, with a neighbor, the uh, seniors residence. There was interest in buying the north portion of our property. Uh, and we were of the impression that that was going to uh, proceed to, to closing. Uh, and unfortunately, earlier this year, that sale fell through. And so we were left with a project that we'd been sitting on for uh, quite a lengthy time um, because there was no, uh, no point to doing work on a project on a piece of land that was going to be sold. Uh, so when that happened, um, we, we circled back, got the architect involved, started looking at design, and we attended a pre-consultation meeting this month with township staff to uh, discuss how to move the project forward through a site plan application. And we're hopeful that uh, within the next few months, we're going to be able to make a formal site plan submission to the township. Uh, and if everything goes well, we'd be able to start servicing late this year, probably more likely early 2021, and then unit construction after that. And that hopefully puts us into a position to register the North condominium late 2021 or early 2022. And hopefully that keeps us within the two year time frame that uh, the extension that we're asking for now. Uh, so that's that's the that's where we're at with both of those projects. We just wanted to provide some assurances that we're uh, keeping the projects moving. We're getting things going again, and we're hopeful that we're this will be the last extension that we have to ask for. So those are my comments to uh, to the extension request. We're hopeful that you'll see uh, fit to approve that. And if there are any questions or comments, I'd be happy to try to answer those. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Marcus. Are there any comments or questions from council? Uh, to Mr. Marcus at this time on that on that file. Let's go. Yeah, the, seeing none, then um, thank you, Mr. Marcus, for your presentation, and you're free to stay as well. Um, I only ask that uh, if you're not uh, that you mute. Uh, there's um, I, I don't know if it's uh, Mr. S uh, so uh You're you're interfering with a meeting a little bit. Uh, are you able to put your phone or your uh, video? On? Yeah, thank you very much. There we go. Thank you. Oh, okay. I think they hung up. I didn't mean that, uh, but I think they, that works too. <laughs> okay. Um, at this time, um, we move on to count, uh, regional council remarks, and we're uh, thankful to have uh, uh, Councillor Albert Wittedeen from the region, uh, can you provide comments uh, with respect to regional issues at this time? Um, yeah, thank you, uh, Mayor and, um, and members of council and staff and uh, members of the public. Um, uh, on a monthly basis, I, um, I make report to uh, council on uh, sharing uh, ongoings at the region that, uh, that I believe are of interest to uh, to our residents here and to councillors uh, uh, in our community. So I'd like to start by saying that, um, you know, I'm proud of our community and the region Niagara residents for helping keeping COVID in control as we uh, move into stage two of um, getting back to some sense of normalcy. So our, our, our public health team is working diligently to get a quick turnaround on tests. And, and we presently are at like two to three day turnaround. So um, of late, we had a presentation by two gentlemen looking for support, um, you know, uh, to the province to help create more capacity for COVID testing here in Niagara. And this could help produce uh, even quicker turnaround and better monitoring. And, and through that, um, we welcomed and supported it through the, uh, through the provincial health ministry. And this is, this is to, with quicker turnaround of testing, um, it, it will help ensure that we're tracking the virus in a, in a good way. And, and hopefully that will help us move into the next uh, phase of opening up. Um, so from a financial side of things, um, you know, the Niagara region and obviously uh, local municipalities have occurred costs through COVID. And, um, and, and as, a, as a regional council, we're working with staff to find cost savings measures and easing the extra cost to the taxpayer. So last month, uh, staff came back with a list of projects they deemed um, er non-urgent and council and staff are in discussion um, to be able to trim up uh, upwards up to 40 million off the 2020 budget or defer some of these projects uh, into the future. So as you know, it, this has 
many challenges because infrastructure can't be deferred indefinitely. So as we start uh, the process where last week we started the, the process for the 2021 budget and we'll soon have to make some some pretty difficult decisions um, with not knowing the full implications of COVID on our balance sheet. So we're um, it's a it's just going to be a challenging year for us and it's going to be challenging for all municipalities um, you know, understanding those, those implications. So then we were some updates on that I thought were relevant and be interest to to councillors and, and to the public about our um, status of affordable housing units here demand in Niagara because I feel there's some hand in you know hand in hand with COVID. So presently here in Niagara uh, we own 2684 units of uh, of affordable housing and we have housing providers supply another 3600 units and the and those on rent supplement are, are 1433 and we have about we have 734 units in new development and we this is kind of the high impact and there's a waiting list of almost uh, 7200 persons looking for affordable housing here in Niagara so those are some interesting numbers and 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 I'm, I'm afraid as we start to feel the full impact of, of COVID in the economy these these numbers will only increase and and those are um, those are challenges that the mega region has uh, to deal with and, and these these units are are obviously throughout the region so um, you know those, those increases to find affordable housing puts a lot it's a lot of pressure on us as a as a council to to deal with that that factor because affordable housing also keeps people out of homelessness and uh, and that's important so and then just a quick update on our um, two long-term care facility rebuilds here for Lynn Haven we have a uh, construction starting in March 2021 with a move-in date of August 2023 and the Gilmore Lodge is slated for uh, June 2021 starting completion in October of 2023. So these these projects will both be debentured and amortized over I believe, close to half the life of the facilities and and I'm pretty excited about this because you know it, it does give uh, it, it's with a community design build and these two new builds will accommodate uh, around 160 to 165 beds per facility. So, um, you know, kind of a, an, an, a, you know, something we can, as a region, you know, through this COVID challenge also, we, we didn't have, uh, we, there were no, uh, my, my understanding, we didn't have any outbreaks in our facility. So it, it shows that, you know, region run facilities, uh, you know, are, are run with, uh, you know, with high standards. So, and, and lastly, um, the mayor and myself have been working closely with public work staff and and addressing waste collection or their lack of uh, the service by the contractor and I'll, and I'll let the mayor kind of give us an update on our strategies moving forward. Um, we, we, we were in discussion with our, uh, our public works uh, staff today and we went over some options so I will uh, let the mayor uh, give us that update so uh, and so this is my report and if anybody has any questions uh, I will answer them to the best of my ability so thank you. Councillor Trombetta. Thank you Mr. Mayor. Uh, through you Mr. Mayor to uh, Councillor Wavian. Thank you for I thought you weren't going to touch on the garbage. I'm glad you saved that to the end there because obviously <laughs> it's been a it's been a, a challenging uh, couple months uh, with the garbage related issue. I can't uh, Willing to hear what the mayor has to say because I've been fielding tons of calls on this issue, which I'm quite sure all of you has, have had as well, members of the council and probably the community can see. Uh, I know their contract's coming to an end, I'm glad, but I don't know if it's because it's coming to an end, they don't want to pick up the garbage. So uh, I hope we can have some more insight on this and how to handle the outgoing uh, or the incoming, I mean, uh, calls and emails that we're getting from residents. So hopefully the mayor can touch on this. But thank you for the report, uh, uh, Albert. I really appreciate it. You're welcome, Councillor Trombetta. Okay, are there any other um, councillors uh, wishing to ask a question? Okay, uh, Councillor Jonker. One. I have one. Okay, all right. So I'm going to go to Councillor Jonker, and I see uh, Councillor Riley, 
and uh, then I'll go to Councilor Rayner. Go ahead, Councilor Jonker. Yeah, I, I've uh, I've been clearing out my garbage for the last three days, so I know what everybody's going through as well, and I think the mayor does as well. We're on the same route, so um, I think I, I, I've said it before too. I think in a meeting, and I, I hope Region learned a lesson that two-year contracts don't work. Um, equipment runs on a five-year contract, and I think at the end of the day, all we can say to our public is that we, uh, as, as as a township and as region, I think we really need to learn that a five-year contract, you extend only two years, you're getting into equipment that's old. Um, and that's what we ran into here. We, uh, the region, may, I, I believe, made the mistake of extending a contract for two years. And when you extend a contact track two years, you're, you're, the, the person supplying the contract is not going to spend half a million dollars on a truck and that he can't pay off so he's gonna use that old equipment that's gonna keep breaking down all the time and i think that's what we that's the consequences we're seeing right now is the the other um, supplier couldn't keep up demand because his equipment got old and then to patchwork in this little area of west lincoln and lincoln they brought in another company with old equipment so i think all we can say to us is is to the residents is Please be patient. This contract's coming to an end, and we will see new vehicles coming down the road in, I believe, September, October, and and our our the contract will fix itself. It will that will fix it. Um, equipment lasts five years. After that, you're running into problems. So that's okay. I think what we can say to our our, our residents. Okay, uh, Councillor Riley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I guess I won't touch too much on that. If you're going to address that uh, yourself, I do want to get into that. Uh, you know, I, I appreciate Councillor Jonker's comments about, you know, just telling our constituents to suck it up for three months. I don't think that's acceptable. Um, I think we were going to be in for a long haul there and it's only getting worse. I think that the region needs to do more. It's obviously their mistake. Uh, they should have extended it longer. They should extend it longer, but we'll, I'll save that those arguments for those comments for that point. Um, my question to you, Mr. Mayor, to the, actually could be either to yourself or uh, Councillor Wedebean, um, is actually in relation to the gypsy moth issue. And I'm wondering if the region has any programs or policies or not policies sorry but any incentives um that can help some of um the burden that our community has from my understanding our municipality covers a very minimal portion of the the cost i think some of the administration aspect i don't know what that dollar figure is but i'm really hoping you know as you've all seen i'm sure if not through social media but emails and phone calls as well but you know we're quite invaded this year and i would like to hope that the region somewhere somehow um has the capability of helping us out since our tax base certainly couldn't um support any major any aggressive measures so i'm hoping that we can maybe get some insight uh if there's anything or if at the very least if you guys could find a way to bring that up um in a future meeting i will say this um there's nothing uh specifically in in recent agendas dealing with it but there is the uh overall uh natural heritage um was um taken back from from the NPCA um, a year to about two years ago and and transported back into the municipality of the region, um, and part of their strategy is to to look at all of the natural heritage and part of that is they're they're working on a new um, bylaw for their tree bylaw which is going to provide some uh, regional consistency across the uh, the twelve municipalities. Uh, it might form part of a discussion at that time, which I'd be um, more than willing to raise at that time. Generally speaking, though, uh, spray programs, the, the cost of the actual spray program is borne by the landowners because they are the, the beneficiaries of that. The municipality has facilitated and paid for the facilitating of uh, connecting landowners to a contractor that can do that spraying. And I'm talking, I'm, more appropriately for larger acreages, uh, woodlots, that sort of thing. And uh, the township has paid for the spray of township owned lands that have um, been infected so as to participate with next door neighbors. It does, it's very, um, it's not very effective if one landowner, i.e. the town doesn't participate in a particular area because then 
um, you know, it, it just reduces the effectiveness of of the spray for those people going around. So the, the where the let's put it this way: the township is a good neighbor to those areas that are being affected. Um, so that's that's what typically has been done. Um, the region can play a role in that as well, which would be something that I could raise uh, when we deal with the tree bylaw, and uh, and and that's part of a that's part of a draft, and taking in that whole Department of Natural Heritage intermunicipality. Okay, thank you. So yeah, I appreciate the question. Uh, any other comments or questions to uh, Regional Councilor Whitteveen? Um, I have some. Yeah, go ahead, uh, right? Sorry, uh, Councilor Rayner. A uh, couple questions. Um, Every day on uh, Channel 11, we get the report of the COVID and uh, the number of deaths in Niagara, but we never get a breakdown of the 12 municipalities and how many in each municipality. Is there a reason why they don't break it down? Well, they actually do. I can field that question uh, simply. Uh, if you go to the uh, region's website, it's actually a very good um, website um, and it breaks it down by municipality um and so uh you know I, I have it in front of me right now but you have to go to the region's website and they 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 detail that now there are some challenges with that and that's part of the hesitation um uh, when it first came out uh, in terms of um you know tracking accurate statistics but uh, right now the uh, the region has invested a lot of time and energy into uh, providing a detailed 12 municipality breakdown of active and and historic uh, cases of covid right i was referring to the to the amount of fatalities uh because we do have some major cities uh we have welland niagara falls st catharines which i assume uh, was the majority of those numbers yes. or old or old age homes but I was just curious where small communities like Wayne Fleet, Grimsby's not all that big, Lincoln, West Lincoln, um, where do our numbers fit in there? But we just get thrown into a big pool called Niagara. No, no. Um, if you go to the website, you, you can uh, find out how many current cases. Um, my understanding is we have zero current cases. Um, I don't know if, if um, uh, anybody else can speak to that if they've been able to pull it up, but uh, it is itemized now by municipalities so we know what's floating around okay i'm going to go to uh chief fisher because he's got that in front of him uh thank you mr mayor to uh councillor rainer um the covid cases are broken down by municipality but the deaths are not you will not see the deaths um by municipality right now as it stands on the region web i get a read uh, not to my knowledge, um, I guess, uh, my understanding it is, it, it's up to, or it comes from, uh, Dr. Hergy, uh, at the region. So, uh, I personally, I don't think you'll see it, um, get to that, but it might, but right now you won't see the deaths broken down by municipality. It's funny that they won't do it to municipalities, but in Hamilton, they do it to the exact nursing home like Roslyn that lost. 30 people or something, or they do it to Scott Lynn, which is the migrate uh, immigrant uh, part for the workers they have in Norfolk area, but they won't do the whole region of Niagara. It seems that one, they won't do generalities and the others, they do very specifics. There's no consistency. But I guess that's all I could say about that. With regards to the garbage pickup, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Um, my garbage got picked up close to five o'clock when it normally gets picked up at eight. And I know that Mr. Wittaveen, our councilor, regional councilor, supported every second week pickup, but I'm just wondering if they're getting an early run on it. <laughs> and that people, people maybe can understand what it's going to be like on a hot day when there's stinking garbage is out there and they realize, oh no, I got another week to go. So uh, if people are upset about not getting their garbage picked up right now on a weekly basis, uh, they're not getting geared up properly for what's coming down the road because they ain't going to like it. Thought I'd say that for the comment. Thank okay. you. Um, Mr. Mayor. Yep, go ahead, uh, Council will, Riley. Will you actually be bringing up the garbage conversation, or is this the time we should be having it? No, I I, I did plan to bring it up um, uh, under my comments because I did have a meeting okay. with Council Whitteveen on that. So he's kind okay. of simple. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. 
So if we could just table the garbage for now, then I will uh, give um, a, a short report and we can talk about that quite frankly, because we did. All right. Thank you, Councillor Witteveen, um, for your comments. And we're going to move on uh, to the confirmation of minutes. Councillor Trombetta, you have a resolution for uh, Council Minutes regular May 25th, 2020. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moved by myself that the minutes of the May 25th, 2020 regular council meeting be accepted. Okay, can I get a seconder for that? Councillor Jonker, thank you. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, any opposed? And that's carried, Madam Clerk. Um, Would you like me to do the other one, Mr. Mayor, since I'm still here? Yes, please. Could you do that? That's for the minutes of June 16. Just to fill in for Councillor Cody, I guess, since his absence. Yeah. Uh, uh, moved by myself that the minutes of the June 16, 2020 special council meeting be accepted. Can I get a seconder for that? Councillor Riley, thank you. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, any opposed? And that's carried. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Trombetta, for filling in. Um, we have uh, some communications um, for your information. Uh, that's the one regarding um, uh, Kevin Antonitis Chair, uh, West Lincoln Memorial Hospital Foundation, Inc. Uh, that's the local share commitment for the rebuilding of West Lincoln Memorial Hospital. And we have um, another communication from Sarah Kim, the clerk, the Town of Grimsby letter of support commitment to the local share of financing for new West Lincoln Memorial Hospital. That's also for your information. And that leads us also to a communication from Julie Kirkellis, clerk of the town of Lincoln. And that's a letter of support commitment to the local share financing for new West Lincoln Memorial Hospital. That's also for your information. And then we have, um, um, so then we move on to item 12.4. And this is a communication from Ron Tripp, and I'm gonna ask Councillor Ganan to read this communication. Okay, thank you. Moved by myself that the correspondence received from Ron Tripp, Acting Chief Administrative Officer for the Regional Municipality of Niagara, dated February 28, 2020, requesting the Township of West Lincoln to support the joining of the Co Coalition of Inclusive Municipalities and signing of the declaration below and participate in a media release and possible media event as coordinated by the Niagara region with the municipalities be received. And two, that the following declaration to join the coalition of inclusive municipalities be adopted and forward to the Niagara region. Given that one, the Canadian Commission for UNESCO, United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization is calling on municipalities to join a coalition of inclusive municipalities and to 2004, and two, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, FCM, endorses the call for a coalition of inclusive municipalities and encourages its members to join, and whereas three municipal governments in Canada, along with other levels of government, have responsibilities under Canada's Charter of Rights and Freedoms, as well as federal, provincial, and territorial human rights codes, and therefore have an important role to play in combating racism and discrimination and fostering equality and respect for all citizens. Be it resolved that for the Regional Municipality of Niagara, the Corporation of the Town of Fort Erie, the Corporation of the Town of Grimsby, the Corporation of the Town of Lincoln, the Corporation of the City of Niagara Falls, the Corporation of the Town of Niagara on the Lake, the Corporation of the Town of Pelham, the Corporation of the City of Fort Colburn, the Corporation of the City of St. Catharines, the Corporation of the City of Thorold, the Corporation of the Township of Waynefleet, the Corporation of the City of Welland, and the Corporation of the Township of West Lincoln agree to join the Coalition of Inclusive Municipalities, and in joining the Coalition, endorses the common commitments, the Appendix A, and agree to develop or adapt a joint plan of action led by the Regional Municipality of Niagara accordingly. Five, these common commitments and the municipality's joint plan of action will be an integral part of the municipality's vision, strategies, and policies. Six, in developing or adapting and implementing the joint plan of action toward progressive realization of the common commitments, the municipalities will cooperate with other organizations and jurisdictions, including all levels of government, 
indigenous peoples, public and private, private sector institutions, and civil society organizations, all of whom have responsibilities in the area of human rights. And seven, the municipalities will set their priorities, actions, and timelines and allocate resources according to their unique circumstances and within their means and jurisdiction. The municipalities will exchange their expertise and share best practices with other municipalities involved in the coalition and will report publicly on an annual basis on actions undertaken toward the realization of these common commitments. Well, thank you, Councillor Ganan. That was quite a mouthful. I uh, always appreciate your clarity and, and your <laughs> and your defatigable uh, speech. Wordiness. Any comments or questions? That's a motion before us. Councilor Ganan. Okay, so I would like to just comment on this and, and I've written briefly. I said, I realized that the resolution was a mouthful to, at, to say the least. However, the discussion about this item and the fact that we absolutely should become part of this coalition of Niagara municipalities, opting to stand together to combat racism and discrimination and to foster equality and respect for all citizens in Niagara should absolutely not take as long as it took me to read that resolution. Why wouldn't we want to be part of such a forward thinking coalition called for by the Canadian Commission of UNESCO and endorsed by the Federation of Canadian Municip Municipalities? I just said in my est estimation, midway through 2020, is it, it is a bit of what some would call a no brainer for West Lincoln to affirm our support for joining the coalition of inclusive municipalities. Yeah. Any other comments or questions? We just need a seconder, Mr. Mayor. Oh, thank you very much. Okay, Councillor uh, Riley. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, I'm gonna ask, are there any opposed? And that oh, can no. I get uh, can I get a recorded vote for this? Yep, yeah, that's no problem. Um, I'm going to pass the uh, meeting over to the clerk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Trimbetta. Support. Councillor Ganan. Support. Councillor Jonker. Support, sorry, trying to hit the right button. Support. Thank you. Councillor Rayner. You might want to come back to him. Councillor Riley. Support. Mayor Bosma. Support. And one more time, Councillor Rayner. Does he know he's on mute? <laughs> Sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> Support. <laughs> okay, good. All right. The vote is seven unanimous, Gary. Unanimous. Great. Okay. Thank you for that. At this time, we have uh, Mayor's remarks. Um, so I'm going to start with a couple of. Um, uh, sundry items. Uh, first, I'd like to, uh, in, in a much, a little bit more formal way, introduce uh, Jessica Dyson, who is our new deputy clerk. Um, she's top center on my screen, uh, but uh, she comes to us uh, from Grimsby uh, with high regard, and she's uh, managed to fit so nicely into our staff family. And so we're happy to have her aboard and um, take your time to get to know her. Uh, she's uh, definitely um, uh, a pleasure to work with. So I've already in, uh, appreciated that. Uh, well, we did a, like a private video session uh, last week and she was very encouraging. It took several takes, but she was very patient. So I can work very well with her and, and I hope that uh, you find the same. Uh, so thank you and welcome aboard. Which Leads me to the other half of uh, my, my announcements um, that uh, longtime um, staff member, Melinda Dent, uh, who is our coordinator of revenue services, retired on June 26. So she is leaving the organization and uh, I just uh, wanted to uh, publicly acknowledge her uh, great work in our organization. She had a long career in, um, in, municipal, uh, in municipal staff world. Uh, she also had a, a quite a stint at MPAC, 
And so we will miss Melinda uh, on staff here in the office. So that brings me to kind of the hot topic of the day, um, waste collection. Uh, as a, we, Albert and I have been in communication with uh, each other quite a bit on uh, over the last six, eight weeks. Um, and you're all aware, your inboxes are full of complaints and we've seen a progressive slide into, um, really it was un unacceptable in the beginning, um, but now it's getting abysmal. And there are a lot of concerns, questions that have been raised. And so we, um, uh, we've been passing on all of the concerns um, from our residents, trying to address them briefly, but mostly passing them on to the region where you know that responsibility lies. This afternoon at one o'clock, Albert, uh, Wittavine, myself, Madam CAO, um, were able to uh, have a meeting with uh, Catherine Habermel, who's uh, in charge of it at the region, and Sherry Tate, who's uh, uh, the coordinator of uh, waste services at the region. And they are 100% apprised of the shortcomings of this current uh, company, uh, they are on top of it. Having said that, it was good to have a meeting. Uh, Albert uh, Wittaving, Councilor Wittaving and myself were able to um, kind of speak frankly off the cuff. And I don't think that there's anything that we didn't say that, that you couldn't repeat from your constituents. Um, the tardiness uh, used to creep into Saturday morning then Saturday afternoon and uh, Sunday, they were collecting garbage, uh, Friday's garbage on Sunday, and even uh, parts of 16 Road were, uh, and Young Street were collected today from Friday. Um, my, my own street. So it's not like the, uh, the mayor or the councilor of the, of the municipality is getting uh, any special preferential treatment. Ours was uh, some of the last that was collected. Um, in addition to the tardiness is the mess. Um, there's count, there's uh, reports of, um, of uh, employees uh, ripping lids off of garbage cans in rage, fits of rage. They've been uh, reports of uh, garbage missing the garbage truck and just being left on the road. Uh, and uh, a complete disregard for the, the task itself. So that was also raised. Uh, I have a couple statistics um, that they have been tracking and I'm just going to, I don't think I can screen share, but I'll just pull up this document. So just listen to me. Uh, between January 2nd and June 13, uh, Canadian Waste Management has completed collection on only 65 of the 95 days. So they only complete collection on 68% of the days. Approximately 27,000 111 properties have been missed by CWM. January 2nd to June 13 represented a daily average of 904 properties not receiving collection on the regular collection day. <clears throat> Niagara Region has temporarily withheld issuance of monetary liquidated damages <clears throat> for the events date default during the COVID-19 pandemic, effective June 15. And uh, the key factors that the CWM have, have uh, identified um, in their uh, inability to finish daily collection have been due to staffing shortages as a result of COVID-19, increased volumes at the curb because there are more residents at home, and more recently mechanical issues with the collection vehicles. Between January 2nd and June 13, uh, uh, CWM collected 5,042 metric tons, an increase of 2% when compared to last year. Uh, in the comparison, the same time period, MTERA collected 58 metric tons um, with an overall increase of 2.3% compared to last year. So those are some st statistics that I think um, come to bear. Uh, the plan moving forward. Basically, um, Councillor Wittavine and I had a frank discussion with um, uh, Catherine Habermel, 
about uh, how do we move forward? Some comments have been made that perhaps the contractor is shirking their duties in order to, for us to break a contract with them or try to transgress our end of the contract to get the work done. And that would allow them to uh, kind of weasel out of their, con uh, their contract or, 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 or it would make a, us voiding their contract, which is something we don't want to do. So we're um, the region's in consult with legal at all times. So CWM is committed to increase staffing and hire two additional drivers for the week of June 29. So this week, we should be getting two extra drivers. CWM is committed to have two rentals and a third vehicle from one of their other operations in place for this week as well. The Niagara region will continue to um, uh, assess liquidated damages and look for uh, opportunities to bring another service provider in, uh, but we're doing um, that in conjunction with legal because we have a contract in place. And they ha uh, Niagara Region has asked uh, CWM to have their on-road supervisor back on the road. Uh, supervisor managing their work um, has been working from home instead of on the road and that's uh, severely impacted their ability to make decisions in the field. And uh, so these are some of the, um, the things that we've worked on uh, today that, uh, that the region has worked on with CWM in order to get the service levels back up to acceptable levels. So I'm gonna conclude there um, and then uh, see, where, um, see, see where the questions go. Councilor Riley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I do appreciate that update. Um, it'd be nice if we can find a way to get that, uh, some of that information more accessible out to the public. Um, I did wanna, I don't know if I misheard or if I didn't catch it at all, but with the, I guess the penalties that are being charged to CSW or CWM, sorry. Um, what is that money being used for? Is, is there any way that some of that money could maybe be, um, hand back to some of those residents who have had to deal with the hardship of like free uh, garbage tags. I don't know. I just think that people are expecting something more in return. And I don't think they're being given that opportunity. So I was just curious if that's a possibility. So, and if I misunderstood, well, I thought I heard you say something about money, but I didn't really catch where. Yeah. So th they're assessing liquidated damages. Okay. Um, and, and right now that assessment's at $32,000 plus. And I asked a simple question, do our residents going to get a break or some kind of monetary or, and, and really, um, it's, it's more likely what will end up happening. The simple answer is no. It's more likely going to be used if they get those damages at all. It will more likely be used to compensate the region for backing up. So one of the simple plans, and like I said, this is going through legal, but um, the region's asking CWM to make an assessment Thursday morning. So the way the way that it works, CWM generally collects Tuesday and Wednesday in the municipality of Lincoln, Thursday and Friday in the municipality of West Lincoln. And we're uh, so the the problem is we're getting the cumulative cumulative uh, shortages of every daily collection piled on to in in our municipality. Uh, we're asked, the region's asking CWM to make an assessment Thursday morning on whether or not they will be able to complete their routes by Friday. The goal ultimately is to complete all routes by Friday on time. And that will allow us to give six hours notice to a support company in order to get onto the roads and start collecting uh, so that we complete uh, properly on Friday. The ultimate goal is to collect all the garbage and recycling appropriately by Friday, um, that's the goal. So that uh, the region's gonna have to cough up some money to compensate for CWM and they're, they're hoping to do that through, uh, through these uh, liquidated damages. Uh, so if they receive any monies, it will be offset. In the end, the region will probably lose. So I it's sort of Mr. Mayor, but like, so again, so the taxpayers are gonna be on the hook for the matter? Is well, what I'm understanding. The, the region has to pay for it. Yeah. We're the region. Yeah. 
Like, so, you know, ultimately, we're we're trying, and and Councillor Whitteveen, you can weigh in any at any time if if uh, if if you have a comment. But ultimately, we're trying to finesse um, compliance. Uh, we've taken a hard line, and that has not worked. And we've seen a deterioration in in service, and the we're we're caught in a, between a rock and a hard place because the new contractors vehicles are not slated to be delivered until uh, the end of September, beginning of October for their contract initiation, October 19. So CWM is the contractor that has the contract till October 17. And we're trying we tried hard nose, that's not working. So we're trying to soft pedal so that we can get compliance and see if we can work with this. And if, if they are able agree to pay liquidated damages, it would only be able to cover our contribution to helping them along. Um, so uh, Councillor Wittaveen, if you, yeah, you wanna just kind of clarify if I didn't make that clear. There I am. I'm uh, unmuted. Uh, just just to, to reply to uh, Councillor Riley's uh, question of um, liquidated damages at this point, uh, Councillor Riley, they have not uh, been in breach of the contract. They have uh, they've collected the material as required in the contract. The challenge is they're not um, they're not collecting it, uh, you know, in the desired time span. So it, it's it's they're doing their job so it, it's difficult to to say they're they're in breach of contract but so, they are in breach of contract um council would have been because they're not doing their job if they're doing the job they'd be picking the garbage up when they're supposed to pick the garbage up not three four five days later so i, I have a hard time I, it's obviously uh, you know it hits a nerve with me but i have a really hard time to accept the fact that people are saying they're not in breach when they clearly aren't doing the job i can't go to my business and not show up for work and expect to be paid I mean, no, I so, that way. okay, well, maybe, maybe I worded that incorrectly, but I mean, the, being that the circumstances were under with COVID and their, their personnel issues, um, the region was, was giving them some leeway on the contract because the other contractors were, were running into the same issues. The, the challenge obviously with this contractor is, is they seem to not want to fulfill that so how do we do that do we hit them with a monetary penalty and and still not receive the service so today's call was about it was about getting service back to our residents what they what they are paying for and so that's where we realized the supervisor was sitting at home basically they weren't being watched in the field and so that needed to be addressed and the fact is that they they need to be uh, under greater scrutiny to to meet that contract obligation and and director Habermill uh, did apologize for the fact of letting it get this far um, which 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 was nice of her but it, it doesn't make things better so um, I think with this with the issues that are going on um, it's it's brought it to the light uh, that you know, with, with the contractor, they're, they're either going to have to step it up or what we're going to do is um, let's say they're, they can't do the job and we'll, we'll bring other people in to do the job. And, um, and so we, we need to let them basically come up with their solution. If they can't come up with the solution this week, then we need to take the next step. So in, in all fairness, we, we, we have a, we, we're going to get advice from legal, which is, which is important. We don't want to be sued for, for not going through the proper procedures of, of the contract that we signed with them too. So there, it's a bit of a delicate balance this week. And, and this week is either they do it or they don't. And then we know what action needs to be taken. Um, so it, it is a challenge. Uh, but we're we're working through it, and I believe we'll we'll get the re desired result that we're looking for. Councillor uh, Councillor Jonker, oh sorry, Councillor Riley, you, the floor is technically still yours. So just one more, and it's uh, just 
I don't know if you would even have the statistic, but you threw some numbers up earlier, so I thought I'd ask. Do we know how many out of all the people, all the houses missed? Like how much of that, even percentage-wise, is West Lincoln versus the rest of the the region? Are any of those specific uh, specific details available? So just in terms of history, uh, we were uh, with MTERRA. MTERRA continues to fulfill their contract in, in the 10 municipalities of the region. CWM took over two municipalities in order to help MTERRA com complete um, their responsibility in the other 10 municipalities. So MTERRA was having this problem just before Christmas across the region and the, this and see, the bringing in CWM was a solution that helped them tear out in 10 other municipalities. Unfortunately, it hasn't helped us out. Um, so that gives you a little bit of a history. So I don't, I, I can't say because it's, it, um, it's just the two municipalities that are with CWM. And, uh, and so it, it's something we can just play. Like we, I can tell you that by Tuesday evening, CWM is already behind. So they're not able to complete their their Tuesday's obligation. They don't collect on Monday because the dumps are closed. So it's Tuesday. They're already behind. Wednesday, cumulatively more. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and more. So that that gives you a little bit of an insight of why we are in with CWM, with Lincoln. Thank you. And Councillor Foster, and and Mayor Easton are having the same conversation uh, with Catherine as well. So I'm going to go to. Councillor Jonker, then Councillor Ganan. I keep thinking I have to hit my mute button, but I guess my point earlier was uh, that what we got to realize is the region tried to save money and extend a contract, and they went with a two-year contract, and that was unwise. I don't. I would disagree with that, but well, then why are like because you have equipment. That's a, that's why these companies do a five-year contract. I'm gonna and, go to but what, what I want to say is um, more to William Riley is these contracts, when you're dealing with equipment, there's contracts you sign, they, you, they have a little bit of play in their contract to say, well, if we have equipment issues, you need to give us a bit of leeway. When we have personnel issues, you need to give us a bit of leeway. And that's what they're going to be playing against us right now. And we want to be careful that we don't say, well, you're, you're done. Because in those contracts, when you sign a contract with equipment, I, I got 25 trucks, but I can't guarantee you that my trucks never break down. So I write in my contract, I'm, I can uh, do this and this, but if I have this, then I'm out a little bit. So that's where, that's where the region right now has that, that, that tough spot of how to get out of this contract if they can and that's and that's what and I, I appreciate what the, the region and the mayor has just said. We're 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 hard nosed on this. We don't we're not appreciating this, but you have to be careful how you deal with it going forward. It's contracts are complicated, so a um, little bit of patience and hopefully after this week we we can see an improvement. If not, then we will. Then I think you're you're right. We need to take the next step. So, so. Councilor Ganan, I, I know uh, we'll, we'll let that go. Councilor Ganan. Um, I just have a concern about this being the particular week. Are they planning to collect on Canada Day? Yes, they do. Okay. So this 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 week um, this week should operate. This I, I know it sounds really counterintuitive, but this week should actually be an improvement. Uh, uh, our 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 plan is being instituted this week, and so there's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday collection. Um, so this is kind of the turning point on, on this contract. Uh, it's unfortunate it comes down to this, uh, this point, but it really deteriorated quickly um, in the span of, uh, of a month. Um, and, and there's just really no excuse for it. Um, but um, we're hoping that this week of June 29th, they'll have the extra trucks, the extra staff, and the on-site uh, field supervisor uh, enabling to kind of make those uh, executive decisions on the field. And uh, I, I understand that, you know, that person kind of plays a bit of a, a support role uh, at, at times in good contractors, good, they'll show up. I, I'll say this, they'll show up with ice cream halfway through on a really, really hot day. And there's a lot of morale uh, that can be um, 
you know, done in that. So they're, they're kind of an encourager. Uh, they're kind of uh, making sure that the guys buck up, that they, that, that they're, they're uh, feeling appreciated. And when, when person sitting at home and it's one of those uh, challenging situations, if you have uh, an employee that feels uncomfortable to come into work and they stay at home uh, right now, there because of COVID nineteen, we really have no recourse to insist that they actually come into work. And so that that tender thing, um, every municipality, every employer is is trying to find strike a balance between the safety of employees, their comfort levels, and the responsibility to get the job done. So that's a part of the challenges, and 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 that's a kind of a psychological thing that that really makes it difficult. Uh, it's something we don't really experience here in uh, West Lincoln, but they are. Well, I, I was just going to say I was happy, not happy for them, but happy to hear you say that the same thing is happening with Lincoln because it is only our two municipalities that deal with this company. And yes. so I, I didn't know whether we were just always ending at the back end that they were getting some decent service and, and there we were sort of, you know, by the time things are running, running backwards. <laughs> The challenge is if, if your garbage isn't collected on the first day, uh, you know, it's probably more than likely going to be dealt with early the next morning. Um, and that's a business day. So there's a, there's a bit of a normalcy. But when you're, it's not collected on Friday, uh, people go up to the cottage. People have a different plans for Saturdays. They might have events, uh, maybe a little bit less than COVID, but they have plans. Maybe they want to just travel and and so now they have to maintain a garbage at the end of their road on a non-normal day. And, 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 and it could be quite long as we saw this past weekend. I mean, they were collecting this morning. They were collecting 16 road garbage on, uh, this morning. And well, so that's really. Yeah, it, it's gotten worse. I, I mean, I mentioned to you already about the, the complex, the township, uh, the townhouse complex on the back road on Town Line Road where that garbage was put out Thursday morning early and it was still there on Tuesday the following week. Yeah. And that was garbage from the 10 or 12 units that are there, um, including all of the recycling. Nothing was picked up and it was strewn all over. The so region is actually running around with a pickup truck picking up the odds and ends uh, that are forgotten. Sometimes people pull in the garbage at night and they don't get it out early enough in the next morning and they get missed and so well this was not that case the region is working really really hard and they're professionals they're good staff members just like what we have here they're they're responsible people and they're caught in the middle as are uh albert and i and as are you as counselors so i i receive all the you know heat on this that you are receiving and um it it ticks me off yeah. um and i but you know we're, we have a, a a company that um is we're trying to finesse into into compliance and uh, because the hard nose didn't work so albert i don't know if there's anything else to conclude on this uh if anybody else wants to kind of weigh in here um we will be meeting with we will be keeping in touch with Catherine through the course of this week and see where we land on Friday and I will uh, give you that update and uh, perhaps what I'll do is um, Madam CAO did you get that um, that uh, those talking points from Catherine I, I didn't actually thank you for the question um, I was looking for them um, one of the things that we asked was that perhaps the region communication could give us a few points that we could put on our website. So we're going to be staying tuned for that and hopefully they can assist with that. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah. So uh, what I'll do is I'll forward it to the clerk and then um, and then you can just kind of receive some of those statistics that uh, I, I, I put out. But the, the, the region's uh, communication staff is going to give us a hand uh, with our website. It, Again, we don't want to take ownership of this. It's not a municipal uh, responsibility. They have to do the messaging because they're the ones who ultimately re uh, respond to it. We are their, we are their um, advocates and ambassadors. And, uh, and uh, so that's, that's why we're having this kind of frank discussion. All right. Seeing no more uh, discussion on that. Um, 
We have reports of committee. There are no reports of committee. Re reconsideration and motion, motion to rescind are there. Um, so we have uh, consent agenda items. Um, uh, I will read them all and then I'll go to uh, Councilor Jonker. I think he has the resolution um, at the end. So consent agenda items. Um, they can, you can pull anyone that you would wish to vote on separately. Uh, number one, West Lincoln Public Library Board, minutes of May 22nd, information report from the fire department, monthly update June 2020, information report updated timeline for East Smithville Secondary Plan, information report uh, High River, that was withdrawn, uh, information report uh, PD-75 on the building department shared services review, uh, technical report PD-58, Leonard and Lynn Sniffa, Regional Road 65, uh, 5657, Regional Road 65. Technical report site alteration application 8365 Young Street, Bruno and Lily Tasson. And recommendation report road widening condition of consent 9547 North Chippewa Road, land transfer declaration of the public highway. And number nine, recommendation report May 2020 budget status report. Councillor Red. Uh, Jonker, you have a resolution. Uh, all those to be, um, yes. I, 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 I got, you read them all. I, I know. Just, but uh, you, the, do you have the re resolution in front of you? You can't find it either. No, I can't find it. Like, I, okay. am I supposed to read all those again? No. What you're supposed to say is items one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven be in here hereby received for information, and eight and nine be in hereby received and the recommendations contained there and be adopted with the exception of. Anybody have an exception? Sorry, okay. it's my conflict. Well, yeah, okay. I found it. Sorry. Good. I just figured it out. Okay, so you moved it. Can I get in a second? Yeah. Uh, we're, we're, uh, we're, uh, uh, I'm getting Love a little that. tight. So hang on. Councilor Riley, you want to pull one? Well, I can second it as well, but I'll, uh, I like to pull, I guess Councilor already pulled four, I'll pull seven and nine. Okay, so, Councilor, uh, sorry, Madam Clerk, four, seven, and nine are being pulled. So on the balance, we'll put Councilor Riley as the seconder. Any opposed? Seeing none. Uh, one, two, three, five, six, eight are passed. On item four, because of Councillor Ganan's um, conflict, can I get a mover? Councillor Riley, Councillor Jonker seconds. Are you with me, Madam Clerk? Uh, any discussion on that one? Any opposed? Well, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, I'm just trying to get through my notes here. Which, which are we talking about? I which mean, item are we talking about right now? So item four was withdrawn, but Councillor Ganan had a, um, a conflict. So we're going to vote on that one separately just to receive the withdrawal as a. Uh, okay. Information. Yeah. Okay. So on, on four, it's just a withdrawal and it just single separates uh, Councillor Ganan who was uh, had a conflict on it. Any opposed? And then that's carried, and Councilor Ganan had the conflict, so she did not participate. Counts, uh, then um, item seven, you pulled uh, Councilor Riley. Would you like to move that onto the floor? Yes, please. And can I get a seconder? Councilor Ganan, go ahead, Councilor Riley. You want to speak to it? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Um, just kind of like going through this, and again, I, you know, I got privileged to this a little bit when we got our pre agenda meeting. Um, but I, I look at this, and I know the request is 1,500 loads here. And, uh, and to me, I, my concern behind some of this is um, what kind of economical impact that's going to have to the to what we're going to have to invest back into roads, correcting it. That's a lot of dump trucks that's going to be tearing up and down the roads. We already have a dump truck issue to begin with. I, you know, this seems like an abnormal um, request, personally. And if we're even lucky, if they stay at 1,500 loads, how many times have we heard them say three, four hundreds, and it happens to be two, three times that? Um, I have a really hard time supporting this just because I, I just a little too concerned this is going to put uh, a burden on our community. I'd feel better maybe if the director of planning could 
maybe speak a little bit more to this and um, and and see what staff's mindset is behind this because I I just I don't know I just feel like we're going to be creating ourselves a heartache here. Thank you, Councillor, um, Mr. Director. For you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I guess the, the first thing is that we just have a technical report on the agenda tonight because uh, we wanted to hear what what comments there may be. Um, and there's a number of things that, that staff will need to consider before we bring forward a recommendation for, for court. Uh, for example, I have to admit, I really didn't hear a very clear answer in terms of how this was going to improve the land for agricultural purposes. So that will need to be explored. Uh, number two, in conjunction with uh, the Director of Public Works, um, I'll want to make sure that we uh, investigate the impact on the roads and, uh, you know, that might mean that if there is some inkling that we can support such an application, then we might need to do some sort of an assessment of the road and its current standards so that we can ensure it's in that same uh, standard or better when, when this is over. Uh, and, you know, number three, there are drainage issues that have been uh, clearly raised by the neighbours. Uh, that we'll need to make sure are properly addressed as well. So ultimately, the way the site alteration bylaw is written, it really is designed to encourage agriculture and uh, make agriculture uh, more effective at the end of the process. So I'll I'll have to explore and better understand all of that before a recommendation report will come forward. Okay, uh, Councillor Riley, any other comments on that particular item, Councillor Ganan? So on that same item uh, to, to Director Treble, um, the other thing that I was doing was I was looking on the map and we assumed that maybe in our discussion that Grassy Road and Young Street would take the brunt of that. But there also is another way if trucks are coming from Hamilton. So when you're looking with the Director of Public Works, you need to, I think, examine also South Grimsby Road 15 and, and some of those surrounding roads that they could use to bypass Grassy Road, but but on roads that are less able to take the impact of that many trucks. So I think there are many big issues that need to be looked at on this, so that's it. Thank you. Any other comments on this particular one? Okay, then we're gonna take up the vote. Are there any opposed? Thank you, and that carries. Item nine, uh, Councillor Riley, you pulled nine, nine. Would you like to move yes. that? I'll move that as well. And can I get a seconder? Councillor Jonker, uh, go ahead, Councillor Riley, you want to speak to it. Yeah, so I just thought this was worth pulling, so I'm just bringing it up here as in a different section of the agenda. Um, where did you go? Okay, so I guess, because uh, this is, uh, sorry, just give me two seconds here. Okay, so I thought it would be probably um, best if we could get maybe hear from the director of finance a little bit um, about this, then let's just kind of pass this freely. Uh, there's a, you know, quite a few things that are covered in this through, you know, expenses and, uh, and things that we're doing and understanding there's the forecast. I know there's a part of it that was, I think, related to um, water. Oh yeah, the water um, and the not going to disconnect that for the remainder of the 2020, which I have no problem with, but I wouldn't mind hearing from the director too, um, maybe just a little bit, uh, um, of a synopsis of this for those who you know may not have taken the time to digest it all. Director of Finance, Donna, please go ahead. Um, thank you, Mayor Bilsma. Uh, through you to uh, Councilor Riley. Can you all hear me okay? I'm using my, okay, good. Yeah, you're good. Um, so thanks for pulling this report. It's our monthly update, but in it I've included um, some updates on COVID and the impact it has on our municipality. Um, as the councillors know, you've uh, provided relief for the past three months in terms of relief to um, interest and penalties on water and taxes. And that relief ends at the end of June. So the only relief measure I'm continuing to recommend is that water shutoff um, fees for the remainder of 2020. Um, one of the reasons for that is it also provides safety to our operators because they're not going door to door. Um, so there's none of that contact going on. We will still have to manage arrears, however, and that'll be done by um, working with uh, property, uh, property owners if they can't pay their water. But at some point it may involve us adding arrears to taxes. So I just wanna make sure council is aware of that option that we do have. In terms of the uh, analysis, um, it's on appendix uh, D. 
and we break it down between uh, lost revenue and uh, mitigating factors that we have and also any additional expenses. So um, in terms of the relief measures that council um, approved and perhaps will approve this evening as well, it, we're looking at about a $60,000 loss in revenue for um, th those relief measures. In terms of lost revenue because of um, our facilities being closed, in particular our recreational facilities, we're looking at a loss in revenue of um, about $88,000. In, in this analysis, I'm assuming that there's no field rental. Of course, you know, it's early and you don't know what August may bring, but that's what the assumption is in this report. Um, in terms of other revenue loss, I am projecting some decrease in bank interest revenue. Um, the rates aren't as high as they used to be, and um, I'm projecting that. And, and also, I should have mentioned that this projection is to the end of December. It, it, we're trying to forecast for the entire year. Uh, we do have some mitigating um, efforts to help offset the loss in revenue. Um, Council directed uh, staff not to hire any of the new 2020 hires. Um, there was a moratorium on that to the end of June. That provided savings. Um, Canada Day programming is changing. It's going um, online with other municipal municipalities in Niagara, so that provided savings. Um, crossing guards have been laid off, another form of savings. Um, so at the end of the day, we're projecting an overall um, loss to the municipality of 129,600. Um, at this point, I'm hoping that we could have some savings in other budget lines. So we will not have to um, use reserves, but if, if we don't have enough savings and we have to use reserves, they would come out of the contingency reserve. Uh, the final line on this report, I'm calling it opportunity cost, and it's a high number, 729,700. And the reason this report, that number is being used is um, when the Niagara region started their um, advocacy um, program with the other tiers of government, the provincial and federal government, they um, provided this number for at the regional level. So the local community are also providing the Donna, Donna, okay. We Donna, I'm gonna have when to they go to the higher impacting municipal well, it's costs that are in the budget, uh, in all these different areas sitting on um, they're not able to do other projects. Okay, Donna, can I ask yeah. you to repeat that last couple sentences? Um, you were starting to break up and go unstable and then we heard it all in pretty oh. much the, yeah. Uh... Oh, where are okay. you? Okay, no, I'm stopping my video because that ruins it. <laughs> okay, so just um, you were, what was the last comment that we understood? Oh, the, the opportunity cost. Yeah, the opportunity cost. Yeah, if you could just go over that point again, the 700. Yeah, yeah. so the region, um, when they began their advocacy programs with um, the provincial and federal government, they developed this figure, they were showing it. So it's the cost of, it's costs that are in the budget, so they're not additional costs, but it represents time and efforts that staff have um, been directing towards this pandemic. And that time is not available to do um, other um, projects. It also represents any lost time if, if staff were at home, unable to work and um, still receiving um, a, pay, a pay. So that number is large, um, 729,700. And that will also be given to the region. So when they do their um, reports, it'll include all the lower tier municipalities and this figure. So it really is, um, it helps with any advocacy. And uh, that's it. Okay, thank you, uh, Director. Um, Council Riley. So I'll try to make this quick, Mr. Mayor. Um, so through you back to the Director of Finance, um, the, the 729.7, 
does not include the revenue shortfall either, right? The, I don't have the number in front of me. We'll say we'll call it 110,000. So technically, the impact is probably closer to almost 850. Would that be a fair assessment? Uh, through you, Mayor Bills, Mayor Council Riley. Yeah, you're correct. The okay. um, the real loss is 129,600, and you add the 729,700 to it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other further questions on? Uh, the director D. Philippus report. Okay, then uh, I'm going to uh, call the question. We we got a seconder for that, right, uh, Madam Clerk? It was uh, Councillor Jonker, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Um, any opposed? Seeing none. Then uh, that's great. Thank you very much. Moving on. Uh, item 17.2. Uh, Director of Planning, Brian Treble. This is the um, importation of Phil uh, Bosich, Shilster Builders agent uh, on 8006 Concession 7 Road. Councillor Ra uh, Rayner. You Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yep, go ahead. Moved by myself. Is that one? Report PD 078 20 regarding recommendation report. Importation of Phil, Mr. and Mrs. Bosich, Shilster Builders agent. 8006 Concession 7 Road, South Grimby Ward, Township of West Lincoln, dated June the 29th, 2020, be received. And then importing up to 500 cubic meters of additional soil for a total not to exceed 3,000 cubic meters. 300 truckloads be permitted, provided that the following conditions are met. A, that the site is properly graded and topsoil applied in such a manner that the lands can be properly maintained and will adequately grow crop, hay or lawn as planned that the site sketch that was submitted with the application be updated to show the finished elevation in order to assure completion of this project that a five thousand dollars security deposit and a site alteration agreement be signed that a penalty be imposed that another non-refundable thousand be paid as a double permit fee that a permit such as the one found at attachment three to this report be issued following the completion of the conditions above and that three, that open roadside ditches be maintained and inter permits be approved to the satisfaction of the Township of West Lincoln Public Works Department. Four, that any requirements of the Niagara Peninsula Conservation Authority, NPCA, must be complied with. And that a bylaw be passed to authorize the mayor and clerk to enter an agreement with John and Leanne Bozich, Shilstra Builders agent. Thank you, Councillor Rayner. Can I get a seconder for that? And Councillor Jonker. All right, um, any comments or questions? I have one. D, that a penalty be imposed such that another non-refundable $1,000 be paid as a double permit fee. What exactly does that mean? Councillor, or uh, sorry, uh, Director of Planning, Mr. Treble. Um, through you, Mr. Mayor, staff are, are proposing on this one and also on the, uh, the BUD application that because they're is a contravention uh, or uh, non-conformity with the site alteration bylaw that we maybe give them a, a bit of a, a stick so that they know enough to comply and come in and make an application in the future. Um, word needs to get out and, and we've been trying for, for months it seems like, if not years, to get better word out to the community. Um, but in this case, they're applying for a permit after the fact and and it's only because we caught them and and had to with my bylaw enforcement uh, staff stop them um that they're even on the agenda tonight so the, the penalty is really a bit of a stick um and and likewise with the uh the bud application because they started building a berm which was completely contrary to the recommendations of staff in that particular location all right Council Rainer, you're satisfied with that? Well, Anyone? basically, the word should be a fine. <laughs> we just didn't use that word because we don't carry a gun. So I guess um, it's pol basically policing. The only thing, I understand what Mr. Treble's doing, and I appreciate the fact that you're trying to send a message, but Mr. Treble and I have been around this township a long, long time, and there's been an awful lot of people in the past that have come after and uh, I believe Councilor Merritt used to say that it's a lot easier to come and say I'm sorry than it is to ask permission. Is that not correct, Mr. Treble? Can I just... 
Mr. Treble, I don't know, you need to answer a bit of a rhetorical question. Go ahead. Yeah. I, it sounds like somebody else is trying to speak, though. Yeah. I read it as that a penalty to be opposed. I, I got what they're saying here. I, I think what their, their wording is clear, and it, it's that a penalty be opposed such that another. So they're basically, there's a penalty. Yeah. And it's, so I, I like it. It's good. Through you, Mr. Mayor, it's the same kind of concept we use in the building world where, uh, you know, if they start construction and are caught building without a permit, then it's a double permit fee. So we're applying the same kind of concept here. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, this is the, these are the first two applications or reports tonight where we've, we've added that clause. In this particular case, uh, though, you know, Councillor Rayner is correct um, that there have been a number of instances where trucks have uh, been rolling down the highway and we're trying to add some uh, disincentives so that they stop doing this. I will say for the record, though, that Mr. Skillstra has been very good to work with. Uh, his trucking company was a bit of a challenge that uh, had been hired to haul in the fill, but Mr. Skillstra himself has been very cooperative. And, uh, you know, I look forward to future relations with him that, uh, you know, mean that uh, uh, the applications come in first. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other comments or questions from councillors? No more rhetorical. No more rhetorical. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Rainer. All right, then um, um, I'm going to ask the question: uh, are, are there any opposed? Seeing none, that carries, Madam Clerk. Okay. Um, we have uh, item 17.3. Councillor Riley, you have that resolution. I do, Mr. Mayor. Can I do one thing, Mr. Mayor? Um, I'm gonna allow just a little latitude. Go ahead, I, sir. I just, I just wanted to apologize to council for, for taking Phil in and not, not, not going through the rules, which was something of a learning curve for me. So, um, I just, uh, you know, when you see a skillster sign pop up, I don't want you to think, you know, watch that guy. It's, it was a learning curve for me. I'm, I'm, I apologize. And, uh, you know, we of course want to do everything above board. So, okay. Uh, I just wanted to, to say that. All right, thank you. Okay, Councillor Riley, you have the next motion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate hearing that, Phil. Thank you. All right, uh, next motion. Okay, so uh, recommendation report number PD 079 20 site alteration application bud developments, Inc. Ranking Construction, Inc. Agent 2881 South Grimsey Road 5, being lot one, plan file number 3000 004 20, moved by myself. That report PD-079-20 regarding recommendation report site alteration application, but uh, developments Inc. Rankin Family, or sorry, Rankin Construction Inc. Um, agent 2881 South Grimsby Road 5 being lot one, plan M94 dated June 29th, 2020 be received. And I gotta take a breath. That a site alteration permit in a form similar to that found at attachment three to this report be approved by the township council subject to conditions as noted in the permit including that the construction of the berm along with cpr lands being halted as it is not part of this permit and that soil be stockpiled on site for the time being and that all efforts be taking uh, sorry all efforts be taken into acknowledgement and protect neighbor residents, including, but not limited to dust control, speed control, noise control, obedience of highway traffic act, et cetera. Failure to do so will provide bylaw staff with authority to revoke this permit and that the permit uh, be issued with a thousand dollar penalty for double permit uh, fee to be paid for breach of the permit issued by the township file number 3000-002-20. Thank you, Councillor Riley. Can I get a seconder for that? Councillor Trombetta, thank you. Uh, any comments or questions on this one? Pretty much the same. All right, uh, Councillor Riley, go ahead. Right. I guess just to kind of go over things, um, as I'm reading, I'm just trying to flip through my notes again here. Um, Sorry, I'm just trying to bring up the one page. I know he had uh, mentioned that he addressed some of the concerns that were out there. And I know I did remember going through seeing the petition. I think it was actually emailed to us prior by uh, members of the community. Um, I guess for the most part, like a residents are looking to have kind of have that extra um, confidence knowing that staff is able to do something 
um, should these guys, you know, not comply. You know, I think it was my, great to hear. Um, oh my goodness, I can try to see if she's still with us. Uh, I think it was uh, Leslie mentioning that uh, the, the vibration aspect has stopped uh, since then, but uh, they're still dealing with an abundance of uh, dirt, debris, and I really don't know what we can do um, and how we how we go about working with this. Uh, so maybe through you to um, the planning department, uh, the director of planning, sorry. Um, in the event that this stuff happens, like what is, what can staff actually do to control? Like it's one thing for us to go out and issue them what a, another double permit fee, but it doesn't change the, the recourse of the, the damage that's done. You know what I mean? And so I, I kind of just would love some extra clarity um, and what we can actually do to protect our residents. Director Planning, go ahead. Through, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, a couple of things come to immediate or immediately to mind. I guess the, the first thing is that, as I understand uh, the construction activity, the vibration was actually tied to the construction of the berm. I think it was the, the compaction equipment or, or whatever that was being used for the construction of the berm uh, that, that was causing the vibration. And that has stopped and uh, Mr. Stowe, uh, Trichu and, and Mr. Bud who were on earlier have reassured me that that will not happen as part of um, this particular site alteration application. The second piece that, uh, that I can say, um, both the Director of Public Works and myself have had discussions with uh, Stowe now about uh, the road issue and he has reassured us that uh, if we have issues on South Grimsby 5 or any issues for that matter with the trucks that uh, we are to call him directly. Uh, in fact, he's even offered that we can give out his cell number to the neighbors so that he can uh, intervene directly and, and uh, ensure that things are done properly on site. The caution though, I guess, in all of this is there is some benefit in terms of taking soil from one project in Smithville and putting it at another potential project site in Smithville and not having trucks haul soil out only to have trucks coming back into town in a couple of years to develop Mr. Bud's site. So um, there is going to be long-term construction activity happening on Mr. Bud's site as part of a new residential development in this town. And it's, it's in a newer, different area of town that residents haven't been used to. Um, but this is the early stages. There is no planning approvals for any subdivision development there yet. All of those planning approvals and public meetings are yet to come. So, you know, we can regulate it, I think, reasonably well with site alteration. In fact, my bylaw officer is on, on the screen here now as well. Just be prepared if there's questions on a couple of reports. Uh, and she'll tell you that if, if we have to revoke the permit, we will. I appreciate hearing that because uh, I think that uh, that alone also gives residents peace of mind of knowing that there is some accountability should they um, not comply and knowing that who to contact I think will be beneficial and I appreciate hearing that the, uh, the individual himself is willing to you know put himself out there and be reached should uh, people have complaints so uh, hopefully we can make that information as accessible as possible. Okay any other comments or questions on this particular item? Seeing none, I'm going to call the question. All those opposed? And that is carried. Thank you very much. Moving on to 17.4, uh, Director of Finance, uh, Ms. B. Philippus. Uh, this is a administration fee for temporary bulk water accounts. Uh, Councillor Trombetta, you have that resolution. Yes, I do, Mr. Mayor. Hold on one second here. So, uh, one second. Scroll down here a bit. Sorry, Mr. Mayor, this e-scribe is a little bit different. It's okay, Jason. No, I'm not the only one having fun with it, but I got mine figured out. No yeah. pressure. Yeah. You want to start reading that for me, Mr. Mayor? Because it's I, I, I will. Okay. Um it, this one's gonna be moved by Councillor Trombetta that report RFD T 13 20 dated June 29, 2020, regarding new administration fee for temporary bulk water accounts be received. And two, the following changes to bylaw 20 
2004-42 being a bylaw to regulate the supply of water and provide for the imposition collection of water rates be approved and effective July 1st, 2020. Update section one by adding definition of bulk water customer and two, amend schedule C water filling station rates to include an account fee for infrequent users section to state a non-refundable taxable $40 admin fee to be charged upon each account activation and by removing the refundable $50 daily deposit requirement that council provide that's number three that council provide approval for staff to investigate further long-term alternatives to the bulk water financial processes currently in place moved by councillor trombetta can i get a seconder councillor ganan any comments or questions go ahead councillor jonker yeah, I guess what I just wanted to, uh, that uh, wondering why the uh, staff do. I guess they they feel they need to investigate further long term alternates to the bulk water. Like I'm just kind of wondering what what's what's the post why why they added that. I don't know if I can uh, ask uh, director, director, director of finance. finance. Yes, <clears throat> through you, uh, Mayor Bilsma, to Council Jonker. Um, I, I'm going to start by saying I have the best staff that constantly are bringing me new ideas and they see things and they, they think we can do things better. Um, so one of the items is we're always looking to make um, the process more efficient. Um, we're looking to see if we can somehow um, have a system where it's a prepaid system. Is that way um, we can issue perhaps cards, people can um, pay up front for the water. And that way, um, there's less of a there's no collection issue in terms of the municipality. So we're just looking at, at ways of in, improving um, the process right now. This is the first one. It, this was an easy fix just to help recoup some of our costs. Um, so yeah, so you may you'll probably see future reports about bulk. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Okay, and um, Councilor Ganan was the seconder, so um, all, I'm going to call the question. Any opposed? And that is carried. Thank you very much. Moving I'll read on. this one, Mr. Mayor. I'm caught, I got that on the page. Oh, okay, now. good. So you'll do this one for uh, Councilor Cody. Go ahead, sir. Uh, thanks. Uh, moved by myself to report RFI PW 17 2020 West Wing Community Center. 2019 update dated June 29, 2020 be received for information for information. Sorry. Yep. Okay. Can I get a seconder on that? Council Riley, any comments or questions? Go ahead. Council Riley. I'll just make a brief comment just because I know this was my original motion. Um, quite a few months ago, I, I want to thank, uh, actually staff and the director, uh, for putting some thought to this. I realized given the, the current nature or the current climate we're living through, um, it certainly wouldn't be a good, good year to, to start this anyways. So I do appreciate that this will be reconsidered down the road. Um, you know, we need to make sure that, you know, we, we have a fair, um, picture of what we're looking at from the facility to make it as successful as possible. So um, I just wanted to throw on the record of just, you know, thanking the director for coming back, uh, especially considering the times and uh, I look forward to hopefully it being reconsidered, you know, and uh, better days ahead. Okay. Thank you. Um, we're receiving this for information. Um, any opposed? And that has been received. Thank you. Uh, item 17.6. Um, Councilor Ganan, you have a resolution um, you can read at this time. I can do that. 17.6 uh, is Enforcement Officer Tiana Dominic and Director of Planning and Building Jane Treble. Re recommendation report number PD 31 20, approval of a new sign bylaw. Move by myself that report PD 31 2020 regarding approval of a new sign bylaw dated June 29, 2020, be received. And that a bylaw be adopted at council in the form found in attachment one to this report. Thank you very much. Councillor, um, can I get a seconder? And that's Councillor Trombetta. Thank you. Uh, any comments or questions? Councillor Ganan. I just have one quick question, um, and probably this is um, to Tiana. Um, I know that it says that old signs are grandfathered in in the very beginning. And later on, it 
goes on to say that signs need to be kept in good repair. So I'm just hoping that you feel that you have a strong enough um, authority the way this is written so that a grandfathered sign is not left in disrepair, that you really feel can come back after whoever is the owner of that sign. Uh, Tiana, are you there? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Ganan, um, so we can address that under the Clean Yards bylaw as well. I definitely think that we have enough grounds for enforcement to ensure that all signs, grandfathered or not, are kept in good repair. Under the Clean Yards bylaw, we have a section that essentially um, could classify, you know, a grandfathered sign in disrepair as refuse or waste. So we definitely have different ways of addressing it, but I do, I do feel comfortable with the grounds for enforcement here in the sign bylaw. Good, thank you. Are there any councillors with um, uh, a question or concern? Go ahead, Councillor Riley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I threw you back to uh, uh, Tiana there, uh, Dominic. Um, so as far as the grandfathering signs, um, I, I just kind of, going back to my notes here, actually it's one thing I didn't actually write down, but I would love to, as Councillor Ganan brought up, uh, a little bit more clarity and like what types of signs would be grandfathered? I guess what I'm asking, because I, I realize considering this covers a wide range of signs, um, are we talking about um, specifically to like coming into the municipality, you know, we have a huge uh, freight trailer that has uh, signs on the side there. And, uh, and I think I know the answer to this. Uh, I don't think it's, it applies to that, but I could be wrong. Um, is that like, going to be classified as a technicality as a grandfathered sign that we're going to have more eyesore signs set up like that? Thank you, Councillor Riley. In, in terms of that, um, I think that Mr. Brian Trouble and I would have to discuss further. Um, and I mean, in terms, and you know, we do function off a complaint basis. I think that it, it sort of needs to be examined and reviewed by staff for sure as a complaint would come in. Um, again, unfortunately, I can't give you an answer at this time, but um, I, I would say it'd be open to have further discussion with uh, the Director of Planning and Building on that. Okay, because I, I appreciate that because. Um, one of those things, so if the complaint base still keeps the channel open, like last thing I want to see is we approve this and then, you know, someone has a technicality and they get this, you know, awful looking sign because they've got to have it there. I, I haven't been to all neck of the woods in the municipality by any means, so I'm sure there's stuff around um, that I haven't even seen. So I just want to make sure that we're not accidentally um, putting ourselves in a situation where we're, or maybe, maybe we have no choice. I don't know, maybe through to the director, like, do we have to keep a grandfather clause in this? Like, is that a requirement of any capacity that to an act that I'm unaware of? Go ahead, uh, Director. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, through you, there is pretty much a provision that a grandfathering clause uh, kicks in automatically. Um, having said that, though, th there's there's two thoughts um, that come to my mind. One, there is a provision inside the sign bylaw that says that using truck bodies as uh, signs is prohibited by the bylaw. So it's a very clear um, wording in the bylaw not to allow it. And uh, the second thing I can mention is that there, the one sign that's to the west of town, um, it actually is on a property with a site plan and it's in, written into the site plan agreement that that truck body has to be removed as part of the final approval of the site plan. So there's, there's a couple of ways we can go at it. Uh, even if they are grandfathered, Tiana's even identified the fact that, you know, they can fall into disrepair and we can attack them that way as well. So it'll depend on the circumstances of each case. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I, I do have a, a comment that I'd like to just uh, enter in. Uh, when this first came up, um, I, I raised the concern of illumination and not necessarily the illumination of a particular sign but the illumination of the sign itself. I find some of these LED signs, you know, that they're fine during the day, but they're actually um, really annoying uh, in, in, at night. They, I don't know if LEDs have a dimmable, um, if that's appropriate, but was that addressed anywhere? Because I kind of went through and I talked, looked at illumination and lights and tried to Google or search for just those words. And, and is there, um, because light pollution is just kind of becoming, it's one of those things, you know, somebody raises it and everybody rolls their eyes, but um, I, I, we don't want to be a Vegas strip here. So I just uh, w wondered if that was addressed anywhere. 
Mr. Mayor, thank you. Yes, it is. Um, in specific provisions here, so for example, uh, section 3.4, which addresses poll signs, you'll notice uh, in subsection 3.44, it does speak to illuminated or luminous light. Um, now, every provision regarding every type of sign will have a provision in there as well, a subsection that addresses the illumination. Okay. Um, so any, any sort of flashing lights, moving lights, or intermittent activated lighting of any kind is going to be prohibited under this bylaw, um, as well, of course, it must be reasonable as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, thank you for addressing that. It was uh, something that was a concern of mine, and I'm glad to see that it entered in. I didn't read that that in depth. I was must have just missed it. Okay. Uh, any other comments or questions? Then I'm going to call the question. Any opposed? And that is carried, Madam Clerk. All right. Thank you very much. Moving right along, we have uh, 17.7, and this is Councillor Jonker. Are you able to find? Time to go. All right. You can go right down to the section that says moved by Councillor Harold Jonker. That. And you have to unmute. Unmute. Sorry. You get there one you thing triggered out, we got something else. Moved by myself that report PD 068 20 regarding recommendation report crossings on the 20. Plan of condominium request for extension to draft plan approval north and south file number 2100-072-08 CBM uh, that's south and 2100-072-09 CBM that's north dated June 29th, 2020 be received and that the draft plan approval for crossings on the 20 plan of condominiums north and south be extended for a period of two years to expire on September 26, 2022, subject to conditions as included in attachments number three and four to this report and that a notice of extension be circulated to relevant agencies Thank you, Councillor. Can I get a seconder for that one? And Councillor Ganan, thank you. Uh, any comments or questions? Seeing none, I'm going to call the question. Any opposed? And that is carried. Thank you. Next, we have uh, 17 8, and this is a uh, resolution by. Councillor Rayner, and I see he's already unmuted, so he's on the ball. Go ahead, Councillor Rayner. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Move by myself that report PD 067 20 regarding recommendation report peers review of draft subdivision plans within the Northwest Quadrant dated June 29, 2020, be received. And that two, that staff be authorized to hire a third party planning firm at the expense of the developer to complete peer review of draft plans of subdivision within the Northwest Quadrant secondary plan area and that the cost of the peer reviews be built back to the applicants. Thank you, Councillor. Can I get a seconder? And Councillor Trombetta, thank you. Uh, any comments or questions? Uh, yes, to Mr. Trouble, please, Mr. Mayor, uh, could he please uh, expand on hiring a third party planning firm? Is that because there's some concerns by the township? For you, Mr. Mayor, um, the situation that we're, we're in is that the uh, township put in place a draft secondary plan for this area after it was brought into the urban boundary in uh, 2015. And that secondary plan was approved by this council and every developer, including the two that are yet to come forward, are not following the direct uh, intent and direct concepts of the plan. They're close in some regards, but they're they're not 100% on. So since they have not completely followed our version of how that area should develop, and in addition to the fact that there's already one that's been approved, um, we want to make sure everything aligns and everything's in sync. And that's where the third party comes in to sort of look at the plans overall and say, okay, well, you're not following it. 
but it looks like it will work and it should not cause any other problems anywhere else in the system. So it's it's just to be a layer of protection because they aren't following our plan. Um, <clears throat> through you to Mr. Trouble, I don't understand in the third party because if they're not following our plan and we've just put them in the urban boundary, which is making a lot of developers rather rich rather quickly, and we're destroying a lot of good agricultural land to make them rich. If we don't like what they're doing, why are we going with a third party? Why don't we just say, look, it's my way or the highway or find some other agricultural land and some other municipality to destroy and we'll be quite happy to leave it in soybeans. Through you, Mr. Mayor, planning is never as black and white as that. It's always variations of, of gray. There's policy that's written to say that um, as long as you achieve sort of the density standards and the uh, the ability to be serviced and those kind of things, then then alternate plans are possible. So it's partly in the way that the uh, the plan was put together. It was put together at a high enough level that there's flexibility for these developers to suggest alternatives. Was this the IBI group that made the presentation on this? The part that you're concerned with? Um, IBI group was the first one that we peer reviewed. The next two uh, we haven't had come forward to a public process like this yet. Is this third party review then for the first party? <laughs> uh, we've already done that one. The next two are, are next. So the, the Dunlow one that IBI submitted was peer reviewed last, I'm gonna say last August. Um, so this one's not, this third party review is not on the IBI part, that's the other two developers. Um, Mr. This will be for Mr. Bud, through you, Mr. Mayor, this will be for Mr. Bud's lands as well as the Mars Home development site. It's just that it's unusual for me to see third party. I don't see that very, in fact, I don't even recall seeing it before. It just seemed highly unusual to me because we usually have a, a plan. We usually have rules and regulations. And if they want to be part of West Lincoln, you follow our rules. If you don't like our rules, find a municipality that suits your rules. Once again, through you, Mr. Mayor, these rules are not written quite that black and white. Oh, I would with developers. But rhetorical there, uh, Mayor, uh, Councillor. What's that? <laughs> I said it's almost rhetorical there, Councillor. Oh, not again. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you, Councillor. All right. So I'm going to um, uh, call the question at this time. Are there any other comments or questions? Okay. Seeing none. All uh, any opposed? And that is carried. Thank you. Um, the next one is 17-9, I believe, and that's Councillor uh, Riley. You have that resolution. I do, Mr. Mayor. Uh, moved by myself, that report PD-073-20 regarding recommendation report, naming of Regional Road 24 as Victoria Avenue, dated June 29, 2020, be received, and that a bylaw be passed to name Regional Road 24 as identified in uh, Schedule A, Victoria Avenue, and that staff notify all residents and agencies affected by this bylaw um, further and that uh, should costs be incurred uh, by the public as a result of this change that those such costs with receipts to a maximum of $100 may be submitted to the township uh, within six months of the passing of this bylaw and will be charged to the 911 PERS capital account. Can I get a seconder for this uh, resolution? Thank you. Councillor Jonker, thank you, Councillor Riley for reading that. Um, any comments or questions? Seeing none, I'm going to call the question. Any opposed? And that is carried. Thank you. 1710 is a resolution uh, by, for um, Councillor Trombetta. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, moved by myself the report number PD 07 20 dated J June 29, 2020, relating to the change of planning fees effective July 1st, 2020, be received, and that a bylaw 2011 28 tariff and fees of planning matters as amended be amended by replacing Appendix A schedule of fees with the new Appendix A as attached in this report, and that uh, new planning fees take effect on July 1st, 2020. Thank you, Councillor Trombetta. Can I get a seconder? Councillor Riley, thank you. And any comments or questions? Seeing none, I'm going to call the question. Any opposed? And that is carried. 
The next one is uh, 1711, and uh, Councillor Cody had it. Did that get uh, passed on? Okay, Councillor Riley, go ahead. I, I don't know if that got passed on, but I can read it. Someone Thank you. To read it. Thank you. That'd be uh, agreeable. Thank you. Okay. Uh, moved by myself, that report. Let me make sure I'm reading the right one. Okay. Report PD-076-20 regarding recommendation. Uh, report uh, groundwater monitoring wells for master community plan project in need for agreements uh, with four property owners dated June 29th, 2020, 2020 be received and that the location of monitoring well MW04 in the vicinity of Anastasia Park be permitted in accordance with the approval of public works and the monitoring wells MW01, MW02, MW03, MW05 are proposed to be suited or situated uh, on property, private property with the wells being under the ownership of the township. Therefore, that a bylaw be passed to authorize the mayor and clerk to enter into an agreement with each property owner for the well location and maintenance. The agreement will take the form of attachment three, uh, subject to the approval of the township legal council. Thank you, Councillor uh, Riley, for uh, reading that. Uh, council, any other councillor for a second? And we're getting a little sleepy there. Okay, Councillor Ganan, thank you. All right, good, good. All right, stick with us. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, I'm gonna call the question. Any opposed? And that is carried. It seems like a lot later, but it's only 20 after nine. So, you know, at this point, there's a couple of long ones. Maybe we'll just take, is it okay if we just take a, a three minute break, maybe wet our whistle and, and uh, any other sundry uh, personal items we need to take care of? I'll second that motion. Okay, so let's break for about three minutes if we could, three or four minutes. Okay, wait for people to get back on. Okay, so um, 
I'd like to resume. I, I did look ahead and I noticed that Councillor Ganan and Councillor Jonker have two very, very long uh, resolutions next. So it gave them an opportunity to uh, uh, get that all, all organized. Um, so uh, at this time, item 1712 is a very long resolution. Uh, Cheryl Ganan, uh, Councillor Ganan, this one is yours, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moved by myself. Whereas the Alcohol and Gaming Commission of Ontario, AGO, announced that businesses with existing liquor license sales licenses are able to temporarily extend patios or temporarily add a new license patio for the duration of 2020 in accordance with recent amendments to Regulation 719 of the Liquor License Act. And whereas once restaurants and bars are permitted to start to open during phase two, as outlined in the province's recovery strategy, and for the remainder of 2020, compliance with physical distancing measures and any other public health guidelines or orders issued by the Ontario government and any other applicable level of government will require licensed operators to operate well below maximum capacity. And whereas in order for such a licensed operator to legally expand or adjust their patio temporarily, such licensed establishments must still obtain support from the municipality in which the establishment is situated. And whereas prior to obtaining a municipal, municipal support, a resolution from Township Council is required. And since impacts have already been great, Township Council hereby endorses a blanket resolution to avoid delay as follows. Now, therefore, the Council of the Township of West Lincoln hereby approves a blanket resolution of support for such licensed establishments to open and operate patios temporarily and includes extending patios for the duration of 2020 subject to the following. A, that the fire chief and chief building official are satisfied that appropriate operational criteria are satisfied, and B, that the patio is designed such that all physical distancing measures will be complied with, along with any public health guidelines as ordered, and C, that proper site design techniques are used in order to ensure proper separation of the licensed areas from the parking areas and other non-compatible uses. Thank you very much, Councillor. Uh, can I get a seconder on that? Councillor Jonker, thank you. Any comments or questions? Good. Um, seems pretty straightforward and an excellent opportunity to help out our um, struggling hospitality and, and restaurant uh, business. Um, so I'm going to call the question at this time. Any opposed? And that is carried. Thank you. Councillor Jonker, you have the next resolution. Yes, moved by myself that report number PDO 83 2020 regarding road allowance transfer, Caesarville United Church, so Church Street Road Allowance PT 26, known as Church Street, Caesarville. Dated June 29, 2020, be received, and that the road allowance shown on Amendment 2, former Township of Caster, now the Township of West Lincoln, be and is hereby declared surplus and is approved for transfer as follows. The property owners, Jeffrey Howard and Michelle Witt-Ewin and Casterville United Church, Part 1 to Jeff Howard and Michelle Widowin, same ownership as lot seven and an easement in favor of Casterville United Church. Part two, to Casterville United Church, part lot eight and easement in favor of Jeffrey Howard and Michelle Widowin. Part three, to Jeffrey Howard and Michelle Widowin, same owner as lot one. Part four, to Casterville United Church. Part five, to Region of Niagara for road widening and subject to the following conditions. That the land be surveyed at the expense of the property owners and that a bylaw be passed authorizing the transfer of the former Ch Ch Church Street registered plan PT-26 more specifically be in part one to five of reference plan of, of, of reference plan 
thirty R dash X X X X X future legal description to be provided to the property owners as outlined above. See attachment two. That the transfer of the parts as outlined above to the adjoining land adjacent lands owned by the abutting property owner be conditional on the parcels being merged in title and that the property identification numbers for the affected lands be consolidated and that the property owners provide an undertaking that the pins will be consolidated once the conveyances are completed and provide satisfactory evidence of the call uh, to, to the township and that all legal administrative and any other associated costs be paid proportionately by the applicant property owners three that notwithstanding the provisions of township by law 95-31 and the policy for closing declaring surplus and selling a highway or portion thereof that the requirement for a for an appraisal and well she just changed on me where was i again and that that the road allowances have been used privately for parking purposes and access for mr howard and the church for many years and that mr david ben Bernadelle of the United of the Taysterville United Church, Mr. Lou Dom Jam of oh wow, Ben uh, sorry, Ben uh, what's the name there? Benbrook, uh, Benbrook Mason and Mr. Jeff Howard and Michelle Medawin be provided with a copy of report number PD-083-2020. Sorry. <laughs> you. <laughs> well, I hit a button and it, it also changed on me here. So yeah. I'm learning this. <laughs> Councillor Jonker, very well done. And can I get a seconder? Councillor Riley, thank you. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, I'm going to ask the question. Any opposed? And that's carried. 1714 is an information report. Council Rayner, you have that uh, resolution. And you're on mute. There you are. Good job. All right. That report RFI CAO 05 2020 West Lincoln Corporate Strategic Plan 2020 mid year status update dated June 29, 29, 2020. Be received for information. Can I get a seconder? And that's Councillor Ganan. Any comments or questions? Yeah, Councillor Ganan, I'm hoping you, somebody would say something. I just want to commend staff on all the work that they've done through a pandemic. This happy year to be at the Midway plan in our strategic plan is absolutely amazing. So kudos to all the staff involved and leadership. Um, hard to believe, hard to believe that through these crazy times, you've been able to get that much done. Thank you. What, what pandemic, right? Good job, uh, staff. Uh, kudos. Um, done well, done well. Okay. Um, any other comments or questions? Then um, I'm going to call the question to receive this report. Um, any opposed? Seeing none, uh, thank you very much. Good. Um, 1715 is another Councillor Rayner. Why am I twice in a row? Just because they were short. And so compared to Councillor Jonker, we wanted to even things out. So go ahead, sir. It can't be short, go on call. Oh. <laughs> Come on, just read it. <laughs> All right. Harold, recommendation report RFD CAO 6 2020 West Lincoln COVID-19 pandemic recovery plan. That report RFD CAO 
2020 West Lincoln COVID-19 pandemic recovery plan dated the 29th of June of this year be received for information. And that council hereby approved the working from home policy as demonstrated by councillors tonight as found in appendix B. All right, thank you. Any, uh, can I get a seconder? And councillor Trombetta, thank you. So any you're short. Any comments or questions on the recovery plan? Because I'm short. Councillor Trombetta, go ahead, sir. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it's good that we have a big recovery plan. It's a lot to process, a lot of, a lot of work went into it. So, uh, so the staff and obviously the sitting with the senior uh, leadership team, I know a lot of work went into this. I just want to just make a comment on the uh, schedule. What was it? B. Sorry, let me go back to the. Uh, um, sorry, there, people. Let me just go back there. It was on uh, uh, the appendix B, work from home. I think that's still a good uh, a policy that uh, the CAO has ad adopted. I I, uh, I do believe that, uh, you know, to, to encourage the staff to continue to do that if they're able to. It looks like the way the world is going is that 90% of our jobs now can be worked from home. We don't need to have all these people in the office. That's sort of the consensus that the world is seeing that 90% of the workforce can, they're able to, is able to work from home. And and uh, I, I like to continue to see that, you know, especially uh, not everybody's the same. Not everybody is uh, comfortable with what's going on. Some people are more uh, easy going with, uh, with no restrictions and some people are still really restricted. And I see that in my workforce and I see that how I carry myself. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much going out there and, you know, and I know other people are not going out there. Right. So it's, uh, you know, but, but I'm glad to see that you have that option for people to work home because people aren't comfortable with it. And, and uh, you know, they have to have that option. You don't need the mental illness aspect to uh, kick into some of these staff. It's, it's hard on many of them. And uh, I'm glad to see that's in there and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, uh, things start changing and uh, the recovery plan, uh, we can go into stage three and things can start evolving a little differently, but that's, I guess we're all mandated by the province. And until that, we just keep going, I guess. So I just like to thank you for the report, uh, Madam CAO and uh, staff. And uh, it was well drawn up and uh, just want to say thank you. Great, yep. And that would echo my points to Councillor Jonker, Councillor Ganan. Yeah, same thing. Like it's, you, you get a lot of documents to read this weekend and uh, very busy weekend. But I guess the one question I was going to ask, I don't know if this is the spot to ask it, but where is there anything in here saying when we hope to have our council meetings back in council, in the council view? I, I tried to find it, but I. Page 366. I, pardon me? Page 366. All right. You'll look okay, that up you. and read. Yeah. I'll find that out and we'll see. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor uh, Riley. But I'm going to go to Councillor Ganan first, then over to Councillor Riley. Okay. So being a, being a former teacher, I prepared my remarks because I wanted to say specific things. I said, I'm pleased to see that such a comprehensive, thorough, and progressive yet cautious plan has been clearly laid out. All facets regarding staff and public safety have been taken into consideration. Each area of responsibility has been clearly articulated. It allows for moving forward or pulling back in consultation with various health departments and additionally the provincial and federal government positions as we deal with living and working in these uncertain times. I think that since there's only one meeting of this council in July and none in August, that this plan for pandemic recovery can be reassuring to all of us as it illustrates that there is a good definitive yet fluid plan in place for allowing West Lincoln to move forward over the coming months. Thank you, Councillor Ganan. Um, Councillor Riley, and then I'm gonna go to um, CAO, Madam CAO. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, I, 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 I'm glad to see this. You know, I'm gonna actually withdraw my item 17.17 when the time comes because this was essentially what I was hoping to get at a better understanding of some kind of roadmap of how we're going to get from uh, get ourselves out of this. Um, you know, it's great that we were able to open the splash pad, uh, but you know, I, like, I was hoping that you know that we could have you know a little bit more progression at, at the appropriate time, even getting council life back to somewhat some kind of normalcy. 
Um, but yeah, I want to thank staff as well for putting this together. It's nice to be able to, and I realize you know, a lot, you've had to deal with a lot over the last little while. Um, so it's nice to be able to actually see something that's showing us what we're, what we're using to measure how, where we're going to go. And I think that's the important document to have. This is something that, like I said, I was, when I started reading this, I was like, well, that's exactly what I was hoping to get out. So uh, thank you, Madam CEO, and the rest of staff for preparing this and organizing this and dealing with this. And, um, you know, we, uh, we'll get through this one way or another, but uh, this is a really good document to have. It kind of gives us some uh, vision. I think other councillors can relate as well. You get people asking all the time, like, you know, when is this gonna end? You know, when does this get deactivated? Like how this goes? And I think this is an excellent document that sums that up. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna go to uh, Madam CAO. I, just so you know, I'm just gonna go out and grab my coffee. It's waiting at the back door, so. Then I'll say it twice. <laughs> Actually, this is a, this is a, um, a comment for um, for all all the senior management group and the recovery team. Um, they have worked extremely hard over the last four months um, in un, in an unprecedented way, and we um, we spend a lot of time and we speak about issues sometimes ad nauseum to try to bring them to um, to a, a common ground. And I want to thank them for all their patience. Um, We've had a few testy moments as well, and um, and to to Bob Denton and, and to our fire chief Dennis Fisher, they're the ones who sort of got the recovery plan um, up and going, and we then probably did a, a huge group edit on it as time went on, but I think in the end we have a very, very good product, and I I'm also going to give you a bit of an update on um, a modification we've actually had to do even as of today. Um, we're, we, we're readjusting the splash pad hours. Um, we're going to be closing it at 6 p.m. now rather than at 8. And that, that's mainly over a staffing issue and, and other sort of park related issues. So, and again, we'll, we'll, we'll re examine that and see how, if that's working um, for the public and for um, our staffing situation as well. So, it, it, we, have to, we have to be nimble, and, but we are very, very ved dedicated on um, providing what service we can. And I, I just like to weigh in here because I, I observe how our team is working. And um, one of the things that's kind of fascinating me, uh, to me is that our team is trying to figure this out, but they're not, they're very connected. And so the issue this morning, and, and it was raised, just the, the splash pad. Um, um, Madam CAO just simply asked the question, what are other people doing? How are other municipalities dealing with their splash pads? And, and very quickly we get reports about how Lincoln's dealing with it and Grimsby's dealing with it. So our whole, our whole team is, is part of a network because we're, we're in this internationally. And, 